get our first example of wrist control. Oh, I see. Yeah, yep. when Leia takes down the guy, she grabs him by the hand and she goes like starts throwing him all over the place because she's got the wrist. Once you got the wrist, really, you can control the whole body. I just, the entire motion of the body <laughs> emanates from the wrist. Everything is that. I, I still don't see it. I wasn't really watching. Yeah. Okay. The minute it's so, it's there's something in my brain. It's like a protective mechanism. But the minute <laughs> that like a fight scene breaks out, all of my neurons are like, don't be poisoned. Just look away. And then, <laughs> probably best. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema because it's the only thing keeping the doors of Tharakzul sealed. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Cuba Gooding Jr. again. I'm it's so like a Cubatacular. Yeah. It's the best. Cuba. He's so good. Yeah. Is it Cuba or it's, Cuba? It's I've Cuba. always said Cuba, but it sounds like his name is pronounced Cuba. I believe it's Cuba. I believe he pronounces it Cuba. I will yeah. try to do that. Hey, this is Noah from later cutting in to say, no, that's wrong. It is, it is definitely Cuba. My bad. Apologies in advance for the fact that we're going to mispronounce it about 306 more times during this record. And of course, as you've already heard, Eli's off again this week, but we're excited to welcome in his place, guest masochist extraordinaire and host of the Talk Nerdy podcast. That's Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. <clears throat> Grumble, grumble. Yeah, right. Well, no, obviously, <laughs> obviously. No, like we were saying before the record, like this is the absolute worst invite Kara on type movie. But uh, oh, it's yeah, it's the <laughs> it's the equal and opposite of things that bring me joy. Right, exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us the he, opposite of that song from the musical about my favorite things. Yes, yes. right. right. Yeah. What is the tell us Heath? What is the Newtonian opposite of Kara <laughs> Santa Maria? Okay, I actually love this. We watched Angels Fallen. So you, Warriors you wait, wait you're the opposite of Kara's. <laughs> yeah, I just realized how that works. Yep. Dynamic duo. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Complimentary. It's the story of Zack Snyder's Man of Steel not being Christian enough. Yeah. And, you know, Zack Snyder having too much nuance. <laughs> so they finally made one with a religious theme. There you go. I love that we... We talked over you while you said the title, and it's so insignificant. You didn't even restate it. Like, <laughs> we doesn't... watched Christian Christ, the Jesus Christ, <laughs> yep. Jesus Warriors. Nobody cares. Cares. <laughs> so dumb. And Kara, how bad was this movie? Well, <laughs> that was a great well. That, that was, was pretty you. solid. Pretty solid. Well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank nice. you. If you are a mediocre white man who has a hard on for his country and an even bigger hard on for Jesus, and if your own masculinity is so fragile, you avoid processing your emotions by getting into random bar fights. And if you get off watching other people stumble through escape rooms and... Personally attacking me, Kara. If you stockpile semi-automatic weapons because your paranoia has reached a fever pitch and you're preparing for the cul-de-sac apocalypse, you will love this movie. Oh, God. The cul-de-sac apocalypse is an excellent <laughs> phrase. Is that an existing thing that's known? Or is that just you describing that, what's going on? That is me on? describing this movie. Perfect. I just, Absolutely I, perfect. As, as Heath was saying, I loved this movie at the beginning. I'd already read your description here. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be, this timing is so good on this. So is there anything you want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Okay, for me, this was the best worst four ninety nine I've ever spent. Yeah. Um, yes, I had to pay for this movie, so I need to know a where I submit my my receipt and b um, how much interest you're putting on that. Oh, right, yeah, no, no, which we should have. Eli should have given you Julie's information by now. So S yeah. Send me over your Bitcoin wallet, and yeah, we'll so. work it out. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst subtle biblical references. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, the subtle ones. Yeah, they knew names. Which yeah, ones you, do you mean? Because they were so subtle. <laughs> well, right. No, we'll, we'll point them out as you go. Because they, because you might miss them otherwise. But yeah, like, it's gonna nod to the book a, a little bit here and there as we go. <laughs> oh, oh, the Christian Bible, the Bible mm -hmm. of yeah, the no, Lord yeah. Jesus Christ and yeah. God. Got it. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Now I'm, now I'm thinking about it. They did do that a little bit subtly. <laughs> they referenced it. I was gonna go with best worst weapons. Thank you. So, <laughs> um, worst best weapons, yeah, worst, worst, worst <laughs> silliest 
weapons <laughs> of all time. The silliest combination of weapons, too. It's yeah. Amazing. I'm gonna say two words and leave it at that until we get there. Uh-huh. Knife gloves. <laughs> <laughs> They have those. <laughs> they do? <laughs> to fight demons. They Knife gloves to, for demon fighting. It's just, why wouldn't you just have knives you can pick up and set down easily? <laughs> they have those. They're aware of that technology. Right, no, they do know about those. <laughs> it's because his penis wants to be Wolverine. Yes. This whole movie <laughs> yes. is just this writer and director's wet dream. It's so sad. Yeah. It's just Let's oh. put it all on display. Boy, Don't get Denise it? Richards to do the knife gloves. Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't yeah. do much anymore. All right. Well, everybody needs a minute to shift to the edge of their seat for this one. So we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the cliches that are Angels Fallen, Warriors of Peace. Well, well, hello there, folks. I'm Donald James Parker. Now, I've heard through the grapevine that apparently those guys from God Awful Movies are coming to my hometown, Nashville, Tennessee, for a live show on December the 7th. And I'm here to tell you that you should not go. Those guys are just terrible. They say awful things about my movies. And I do not look like if a Q-tip could argue about a coupon. I don't even know what that means. So whatever you do... Don't go to godawfulmovieslive.com for ticket information and definitely don't check out the VIP tickets for upfront seating and special mixers after the show or the Platinum Night tickets that can get you an intimate night at games and dinners the Friday before or the Iridium ticket that gets you an intimate night of games and dinner the Thursday before or the new Ticket Tacular that gets you three nights with the guys. So, once again, I implore you, do not go to godawfulmovieslive.com for tickets to their show in Nashville on December the 7th. And despite what people might tell you, it does not make a great gift. Godawfulmovieslive.com. I bet Jesus will burn you in hell just for considering it. Hey guys, I want to introduce you to our new producer, Preston. Preston's dad is going to be fully funding our Christian movie. Oh, well, that's Hallelujah. just swell. Fantastic. Gaw. We're all happy to have you here, Preston. Now, as I'm sure you know, the movie we want to make is about a veteran of the Iraq War whose struggle with PTSD brings him to God as he wrestles with the demons of his past sins. Okay, everything about that sounded boring, except the part where he wrestled demons. Oh, that part's metaphorical. No, I think he should definitely, like, really, really wrestle some demons. So, um, sorry, sorry, you want the soldier with PTSD to literally... Wrestle demons, like physical Wrestled demons. Yes, yes. Well, and he's a soldier, so he would probably shoot some of the demons in the face, right? Well, that's that's not. Or um, ooh, he could sword fight him with with a laser sword. Ah. Okay, that does not sound very biblical. Right, right, right. You're right. Um, okay, no, 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 no. You know, totally. It should probably be a fire sword. Yes, fire sword. That's what we're doing. It's not better. Well, I mean, it's it's better. And and. The soldier could be like, pew, pew, cow. And the demon could be all like, oh, fuck, you fucking got me. Oh. Uh, we, don't, we don't usually use the F word in uh, Christian movies. Yeah. You know what else you don't use in Christian movies? Boobs. I think our Christian movie should have boobs. I'm going to go. Like in the, in the sketch or like in real life? Why can't it be both? <laughs> And we're back and we're going to open up with a bunch of cheapity ass logos. One of which is just the fucking Salvation Army shield with a film strip wrapped around it. <laughs> and then we're, we're it's four, four production logos. I'm like, oh, bullshit. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. Lots of companies were weirdly cool with having their name on this thing. Right? Yeah. They didn't read through the script. Yeah. They have, clearly. Then we're, we find ourselves in Iraq in 2011. So we're with a group of American soldiers that's being pinned down by a bunch of scary brown people. And uh, our main character, Gabe, seems to, he's the sergeant, he's in charge. He seems to sort of wake up mid-gunfight here. He does that a lot. He yeah, does. I think he was doing some, just, you know, mindful breathing in the hot zone and then he's sure. like ready to go. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Well, you know, you want to you wanna be centered. But yeah, his guys are pinned down and one of his soldiers, this is Paul, is guarding a large group of blindfolded prisoners. Right? And he's getting a little antsy because there, you know, there are people trying to come and rescue them. So 
That's Mm -hmm. not going to matter at all, but it's going to come back. Nothing is ever going (laughs) to fucking matter. So, yeah, but so the the mid gunfight, they come back. The Sarge comes in and he sees that Paul has killed all the prisoners he was guarding. And he says, oh, they, you know, they were coming right at me, boss, or whatever. And he's like, oh, well, you know, if they were coming right at you. you yep. You know, this is also where the bad guys show up with a rocket propelled grenade. Oh, yep. And I'm like, why don't you lead with the with the rocket propelled grenade? Why, why, why do you have a certain number of bullets that you fire first? I don't get it. That's like every war movie scene ever. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. L- yeah. Lots of you have to, uh, you know, just shoot wherever and then run somewhere and then shoot wherever and then run somewhere. And then the big guns. And then you're allowed to use, you know, boss weapons. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Okay, no, that's fair. That have been there the whole time. That's the, uh, the, yeah. And also, so the guys with the RPG, when they got the RPG, they know it's like big RPG time. So they all just walk out from cover, like three dudes, one guy <laughs> leading with the RPG. And there's, one of our characters, this guy Trigger, is just standing there with a machine gun and he could just kill all three of them because he has a machine gun. And hey, they're man, not- your name's Trigger, right? <laughs> we called you that. So you right, like right now, this is this is, what this it's is for. exactly what. But no, instead, he just yells RPG and they shoot him with the RPG. Now, he will be fine. <laughs> but he won't be able. This is right. this is for me my first taste of the brilliant acting in this film when he's in the girl's hands and she goes yeah, can uh-huh. you hear me and he goes what <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. So good. laughs> so yes or <laughs> yeah and then so and then we get Gabe he's walking through the house to the other side and he sees something we don't know what he sees just yet right but he sees something and it and don't worry we won't know for an hour and 45 and it minutes. won't fucking and it matter, won't matter. <laughs> when we do it was just we, you might as well have shown it to us then it'll be exactly what you think it was Chekhov's nothing is yep. what's happening right now <laughs> exactly and then there's yeah. a gun that's happening that also doesn't matter <laughs> separately at the same time right so he looks over we see him look over and go oh no and then a gunshot like fires through his back and the scene ends. He's waking up from a dream. Of course. Yeah. So he wakes up. He takes a fistful of Zoloft. Which can we t- just take a moment to talk about how like Zoloft doesn't work like that. <laughs> like that's not how I'm, SSRIs. Cara, I, don't, I don't mean to correct you. I know you're an expert or whatever, but like <laughs> a handful of Zoloft. That's how it works. I'm pretty yeah, sure. When's the last time you saw somebody just like, having fun with their Zoloft. <laughs> I'm going to have a little Zoloft party tonight. It's not, it's not one of those drugs. You just, you take, you take your dose every day. That's how it works. More is not better. Yeah. No, he wakes up, he, he takes <laughs> them out of his fucking Pez dispenser or whatever. You can't have like a negative amount of depression or PTSD <laughs> if you take more. Nope. That's not how it works. You can not line up all. some rails of Zoloft and you're just <laughs> nope. like super happy. You can get serotonin syndrome and die. Oh. You could do that. Well, there's Probably that. try okay. to avoid that. Yeah. That's, sounds bad. Yep. Not good. Yeah. So, but then after he takes his Zoloft, he hears this voice and it goes, Gabriel, your time has come. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And he goes and he's like, oh, what, what is that? I guess I should check that out without turning on any of the lights in the house. <laughs> no, he's weirdly calm about it. Yeah. He doesn't do lights in his house ever. He's yeah. uh, he's a dark house guy. I get it. There are people like that, though. I like my, am a person like that. Yeah, my friend was staying with me this weekend. She just left this morning. She comes uh, for work sometimes in L.A. And I come downstairs this morning and she's making coffee in the dark. And I was like... You can, there's light switches and just turn them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hear you across the room doing coffee stuff. I'm turning this on. I'm turning this on. This is ridiculous. Why do people do that? Because lights are bad. bad. I don't like them. Um, So, yeah, but. (laughs) Fuck photons. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) It's about time somebody said that. (laughs) Got to keep the scene moody. So, yeah, so he comes into the living room and Cuba Gooding Jr. is there drinking some wine. And Gabriel's like, hey, who are you? And I'm like, well, he's actually like really the, one of only two actors in this movie. You don't have to ask that about his fucking Cuba Gooding <laughs> yeah. Jr. You're so right. You might, you might have to ask his pronunciation, but you don't have to ask who he is. Yeah. And it's the best. He's just chewing the scenery here. He's just oh, drinking yes. the wine. He's asked who he is. He's a ghost, we're going to find out. <laughs> it's like, who are you? And he's like, hmm, macadamia, flutter of walnut. You have good taste in wine. It's <laughs> weird. Like, okay. I thought he was nice. talking about the scenery, right? Like, the, <laughs> but no, he was, yeah. And it's it's weird too because Gabriel is supposed to be this like combat veteran with PTSD, right? Who's like, yeah, maybe psychotic, maybe not. We don't know yet. And 
there's an intruder in his home drinking his wine. And the only thing he's concerned about is that he was saving that for a, quote, yes. special occasion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest line. Is that the 98? <laughs> Fuck you. Well, yeah. And also, he goes like, he goes, uh, you know, Gabriel, I, I, it's it's time for you to, you know, come with me or whatever. And he goes, how do you know my name? And I'm like, he's in your fucking house, man. There's probably mail laying around. That's such a <laughs> right? weird thing for you yeah. to be freaking out about. Like, that's, <laughs> I, so, yeah. And he's like, I'm here to recruit you into God's army or some shit. And he's like, I'm not ready for that at this point in the movie. He goes, oh, okay, I'll be back later. <laughs> right. And poof, the ghost is gone. So like, yep. God's plan was like, give it a shot quick, grab a little wine. If it doesn't work, you know, we'll circle back in a few weeks <laughs> and do the plan to save mankind from evil. Yep. That's yep. it. Yeah. That's the film. Yeah. So, okay, so now we cut to it's L.A. and it's the present day. So apparently that last scene was still in Iraq in 2011. I wrote that, too. I was like, wait, this wasn't the present day? <laughs> this <laughs> so, is time traveling already. He's got a good wine guy in Iraq. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> At a cool apartment and, yeah, and combat PTSD while he's still in combat. But yeah, right. That's huh. yeah, sets in quick, I guess. Weirdness. So, but Gabe is headed to work. He's it, He works at, you know, one of them filthy overalls jobs. And... Uh, <laughs> As he's headed to work, we meet this his little neighbor girl that always wants him to come over for her tea party. It's weird, too, because she's like 12. She is. Or she's way too fucking she's old. She's way too old to be doing a tea party in her front yard like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She is. Judgy. <laughs> way too old. She's three times the age of the actress. Lots of people have. like tea care. No, not good. So, yeah, but pretend tea is different. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, pretend. She's old enough to make her own tea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So then we cut to like bodybuilders street fighting at a Nazi themed street fighting party. Yeah. And they make sure that we know they are Nazi. Like they're not subtle about the Nazism in no. the scene. This is great. They're all dressed up like very silly, like Street Fighter 2 characters, you know, like fighting <laughs> right, themes yeah. and suspenders, one of them for no reason. Oh, yeah. And there's a swastika flag in the background. So to be clear, there's this Nazi underground warehouse fight club yeah. and somebody showed up early to decorate <laughs> yes. with, with a swastika flag on like a pile of pallets to be yep. thematic. It was probably mm-hmm. the guy in the SS uniform he wanted oh, to, well, you to would just think. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy was, he, he probably shows up every time. He's like, guys, we said we were going to do Nazi. God <laughs> damn it. I had to stop at the gas station. You assholes. <laughs> So, I'll find my receipt for these tiki tortures. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a fight. There's some punchy, punchy, choky, choky. And <laughs> the referee stops. The, the fight ends and he's like, oh, well, it looks like we have our champion. Abel is the winner again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't catch that. So good job. Yeah. Um, I was like, like, oh. It's good that you're pointing these out. Wow. I wonder if he's going to lose a fight to Kane at some point. Yes. I wonder yeah. if that's going to happen. Next thing that happens. And the the <laughs> lumberjack themed announcer goes like, now if there are no named characters that are in need of a proving scene, all the fighting is over for the, and then fucking <laughs> Randy Couture steps up. Oh, so is that like a guy? He's a UFC yeah, guy. Yeah, he's like a pretty famous UFC fighter. Oh, uh, he looks like a UFC yeah. guy. I was like, that's... And he acts like a UFC <laughs> I was fighter, like, wow, too. central casting here. Okay, now it all makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. And his name is Kane, Marcus yep, Kane. Yep, he's like, my name is Kane. And everybody's like, I'm going to bet on Abel. And we're like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you idiot. Yeah. Also, um, Kane has a... Hype man manager? Yes. Yeah. For his yes. for his underground Nazi warehouse fight club career to be managed by this guy? Yeah. They needed a token black man. Yeah, yeah right. I guess. Fully. Yeah, he's the only one. And this guy shows up and starts talking trash. And he's like, My client's name is Marcus Kane. Mark it down. Mark ass bitch. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> see, is that an actual law? He's so mad. <laughs> He's so mad as he delivers. Somebody wrote that and he was like, yeah, I'm getting paid. I almost <sighs> went with best worst black guy lines written by a white guy. Yeah, I felt sorry for this actor the whole fucking time. Oh, 100%. And my favorite part of this, you guys, is that so I used to co-host a show called Take Part Live. It was on Pivot. Nobody's heard of the show. Nobody's heard of the network. It's okay. It was, <laughs> if you know participant media, they're like a social justice oriented film production studio, like a funding arm. Cool. You've probably seen it before a lot of movies. 
participant. Anyway, they decided to make a TV network back in the day. And they and I did a live daily show with my co-host Jacob. They counter-programmed us against The Daily Show. They were like, we'll do a fresh young show and put it on at the same time as The Daily Show. It'll do oh, great. Um, yeah. How'd it go? Not, not great. <laughs> there was, I think at one point, I had more listeners on my podcast than viewers of the TV show. Oh, wow. Sure. Which was, yeah. yeah. But anyway, you we had really this podcast, regular yeah, guest on our panel. He, was, he got to the point where he was a nightly person. So he was just kind of came, became part of the core cast named Tehran Von Gosry, who is the actor... He is the Fantastic. hype man in this movie. Oh, I was I like, know I was watching. Guy. I was like, oh my god, I know him. That's Tehran. So the whole time he's in the movie, it's like really like, oh, that's fucking nuts. <laughs> I was, so, I was so curious where the fuck you were going because I thought you were gonna go. And on that show, one time, this guy named Kane came in to fight all of us. Or what? I'm like, where is she going with this? So oh, we filmed okay. the show from inside of a Nazi warehouse where there was a fight club, <laughs> and we we're right next this to it. This is weirdly familiar to me. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> we panned the camera over a couple times and it was like, swastika, go back, go back, go back. We, we can't stand anymore. No, but like for a year and a half of my life, I was on live TV every night with Tehran Von Gosry, the hype man from right this on, right obscure on. Christian movie. Well, yeah, if you, if you run into <laughs> nice. him, tell him I really felt sorry for him as I watched <laughs> yeah. him deliver these lines. You know, it's like we all got to make a living. So, but yeah, but they organize a fight. Now, Randy Couture is going to take on Abel and they have like the most boring, like you punch, then I punch. No, I punch. Oh, I got you. No, you got him kind of a fight. And then it ends, right? And they don't even have him like, of course, because like, obviously at the end of this fight, Kane would pick up a rock and smash it over Abel's head, wouldn't he or something? But no, they don't even fucking do that. Yeah. I'm already recognizing how throughout this film, one of the major differences in our analysis is going to be that you guys broke down every fight scene. <laughs> and those just <laughs> kind of melted together in my mind. Yeah. Okay. But very importantly, Randy Couture, Marcus <laughs> Kane, wins with a leaping elbow pirouette, which is a real <laughs> fighting thing, Kara. Okay. I'm all pretty right. sure. I have no idea, but it looks cool. <laughs> I looked pretty, looked pretty fucking sweet. So I wish people could see the comparison of our notes. Like, li- it's very detailed. The fight notes are very detailed. No, it's, it's literally guys. like I've got 31 notes. Heath has 29, and Kara has three. It's three. fucking hilarious. And and one of hers is like about knowing that guy. <laughs> so- yeah, no, my whole thing is about knowing. And then it, and then I have a note that says I feel like the movies y'all watch can be put into the weirdest categories based on how they make me feel. This <laughs> This one falls into production value is wildly mismatched with acting. Prowess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big gap. I don't like those. Uh, those. It's like I have misophonia for these kinds of movies. Interesting. Like the whole time I'm, <laughs> I'm like, Ugh, like it hurts. Well, the lighting should be worse. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's, it's What's long. misophonia for all aesthetics about all the art? <laughs> yeah. I hate it. I, I hate their ideas. I wrote, I hate this movie like 70 times. <laughs> I hate this. I hate it. So then, so the fight's over. We cut to, they're in this weird bathroom and they're counting up all the money they made. And then a guy, the movies do this all the time. A guy walks out of the stall that they didn't know was there. So he was apparently taking the world's quietest shit yeah. while they were counting their money. Well, but he's a demon. And well, oh, that's true. The, oh, he yeah, probably just teleported in from the toilet or something. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. He's probably got powers. That's a weird power to have. (laughs) Demons don't have to shit. That's canon. (laughs) Or that they do it really, really quietly. Yeah, Stealthy. Okay. Yeah. So he comes out and he like stares evilly at them for a little while. And then he challenges Kane to another fight. He says, hey, I bet I can beat you in a fight. and You can't even land a single punch. And if you win, you can have this entire bag full of gold bars. Little suspect. Why not money? So why not just make it a reasonable amount of money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at one point, Tehran looks at it and he goes, I'm just going to call him Tehran because that's his name. Oh, sure. And he yeah. looks at it and he goes, It's real. And I'm like, How did how did you just uh, what, say it is that, over there? Why is that what a were you skill? Doing? <laughs> did you bite it? What a weird skill set you brought to this Nazi fight party, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's real. Also, the economy is having a lot of trouble. So this is a good time, actually, to invest in gold <laughs> instead of dollars. In it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and the acting where he picks up the bag and it's all too heavy to pick it up. But for some <laughs> reason, like his arm muscles can't handle it. But those flimsy like straps on the bag don't break. <laughs> yes. <Like, Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are so adamantium bad. straps, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you know. <laughs> 
But yeah, so, but then, and he's like, I'll take your bet. And I'm like, why would you take this bet? And he goes to punch him and the bad guy dodges Neo style super fast and he catches his fist. You had to see that coming. You don't right? take that bet. Exactly. Like you're making a bet with, you know, Satan or a demon, like a literal demon, or you're making a bet with a guy who claims to be a demon and has a bag of gold bars. This is bad either way. Don't do that. There's no way to win this fight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, And of course, he doesn't win the fight. The, the bad guy demon dodges and then he catches his fist and they do that thing where the veins all stand out on him. And now oh, he's... Oh, yeah. It's, it's gold. Like oh, I, yeah. The only notes in this entire scene, again, they play by play the entire choreography <laughs> of the totally fight did. scene. <laughs> and all I wrote was, this movie is so fucking stupid. And then, ooh, weird veins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets he gets the vascular looking demon poison where it like turns yeah. your blood mm. black and you can I see like it. I like it. You need oh, a device. Oh yeah, it's a great effect. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. I, just, I feel like if you're a demon, you want to, you know, sometimes covertly turn somebody into a demon and not have it be very visibly obvious what just happened. That would be right. That would probably be more effective. Yeah. Be confusing for the audience though. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so then we, we cut to a couple of bodybuilders working an armored car and and suddenly a smoke grenade gets thrown in. It's a robbery. Randy Couture comes out. Now, Randy Couture is in a gas mask, but this is like, it's not like toxic gas. The other people aren't passing out or choking. This is just like the obscure the battlefield smoke. Thing. Yeah, it's just supposed to like make it so you can't see. Yeah. You can breathe it because you're supposed to run through it. Well, yes, but right. I the <laughs> other guys are like right. just breathing it, but he's got a gas mask on for some fucking reason. Well, because he's got the vein thing. He needs. Oh, like, right. Yeah. That would be really obvious. Oh, he's visibly a demon. He's in that sensitive part, like in um, uh, what we do in the shadows, where like he's still turning. <laughs> <Right>. you <know? laughs> sure, sure. You can blood. <laughs> and so, but he, he robs the armored car. Because he needs money. We uh, we have no idea why, by the way. He has uh, like $8 million worth of gold fucking bars. But for some reason, they have to rob an armored car. And after he's done, he's, he's like, hey, I'm going to take off my mask so that you guys could see my face. And he's like, why? He's like, because then I'll have an excuse to kill you. And he kills him. Oh, yeah. It's very brutal. Yeah. He's bad. Me he's mean. That's Yeah. That's the point of this scene, I think. Yeah. Kane turned out to be evil. So weird. Evil guys. What? And once again, they pass up the opportunity to have him smash a rock over somebody's head. So, but he kills the bad guys. And then we we have this weird fucking scene where it's after the robbery and there's another guy who's dressed like Randy Couture, but he's dead. And all the money turns out to be piles of concrete blocks. Yeah, what I think happened was because he was tricked. He doesn't get to keep the gold. The gold is just concrete. Fine. But what I don't get is why Tehran's not like, sweet, all that cash we just got from this fight is now mine because my fighter is dead. Oh, interesting. I'm getting the fuck out of here with a bunch of cash. Right. Yeah. He should be thrilled, but he looks disappointed. So, okay. So now in case that Cain and Abel reference earlier wasn't quite enough to justify my best worst, it's time for us to check in at Gabe, who works in Fucking Babylon Auto. Come on. I missed that. Really? <laughs> yes. So I missed that too. Which, by the way, is just a man's private garage. Very clearly, yes. Like nothing about that place looked like a commercial unit. Nope. It's weird. This is a movie about the Bible repair shop is what we're at. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so he's working on a car and it it's the boss's car, I guess. Because that's what you do in a repair shop. You work on your work own on cars. The boss's car, yes. He so, is just in his boss's garage. Yeah. Well, that's that must be. This guy's not very smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's he's working on the car when suddenly he hears a voice and it goes, "Find them," and he's like, <laughs> "Whoa, what was that?" And he closes the the hood of the car and he sees a conspicuous cross hanging from the <laughs> rearview mirror. Yeah. That's stupid. So. CGJ is about to pop up again, mm -hmm, the ghost. Mm -hmm. So to be clear, he pops in for occasional, very vague hints. He does like voices, a couple of words, puts little trinkets around. Yes, we yeah. are watching an escape room, a slow <laughs> escape yeah. room <laughs> right. in action. But he realizes, ah, oh, fuck, I'm dealing with an idiot. So he poofs into the scene to explain directly. He's like, yes. Jesus, just I'm a ghost. This is very important. You have to do my mission. For the fake yeah. universe. Yeah, he sits down in the car and suddenly Cooper Gooding Jr. appears and he's like, you know, you need to fight the demons. And he's like, I need to fight demons, huh? And he's like, yeah, and I really need you to just accept that 
now so that we can get on with the movie? And he's like, no, no, I get it. We're, we're almost to act two. I, that makes perfect fucking sense. And he goes, you know, there are only three people I trust to fight alongside of me. They were all three in the flashback. You know them. You know them, the movie. Yeah. Right? And so the goal here, just to be fully, like, just to hit the exposition over the head, I appreciated that in the film, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what right? the fuck is going on? <laughs> Gabriel has been chosen by the Archangel Michael to defend the Earth against his legion of demons. Not sure why Michael no. gets to choose his opponent. Michael's a bad guy in this. Yeah, film. Michael's the bad guy, but he's choosing the suppo- No, okay, Kuba is choosing yeah, Balthazar yeah, exactly. to fight. Yes, yes, it's Balthazar. This is Balthazar. Kuba is Balthazar, apparently. Balthazar has chosen Gabriel to fight the Archangel Michael. Yes, and his who army, has a legion of demons, and he has plugged up. He's closed the gates of hell. The, the door to hell. Yeah. As, oh, yeah. As a, and it's like a toilet. Like you, once you clog it up, it just starts backing up. So all the hell demons are backing up. Yes. And now Gabe has to defeat Michael to open the gates of hell to open so that all the hell demons will stop fighting in Michael's army and go where yeah. they belong. Yeah, exactly. Go back to hell. So in terms of the corporate structure in mm-hmm. heaven, in this universe, God at the top, obviously, Archangel Michael is a fallen angel in this one. He's I guess, bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's, He's bad doing guy. demon stuff. And Balthazar is a high level manager for God. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So Balthazar, though. That's the Mer guy, right? That's one of the magi, yes, yes. the one who brought right. the Mer. That's what, that, I was like, I was like, wait so a minute, is Jesus he... and God put him in a really high position, and they were like, "Who's that? Who's the resident guy? The guy brought you know, like the hash or whatever it was." We're gonna make <laughs> oh, him. Yeah, it was a good hash. High level. I mean, when the Son of God was born, there were only three blokes who brought gifts. Like, of course, he's gonna pay him back somehow, right? Well, so I like to think that he just rose up the ranks, you know. And at hmm. this point, he's all the way up in like a high middle yeah. manager position or something. He's like, this guy got in my good graces early on with the whole like Son of God thing. Yeah, he's in affirmative yeah. action. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So yeah, but he's got it. Michael's building an army of hell souls. And God needs Gabriel to put together his old unit and fight back. And and nobody ever goes, hey, isn't isn't God omnipotent? Why would he need anyone to do anything? Right? Cooper's like, no, no, you gotta go, you have a get the team together montage coming up. Go do that. And then he Batman's away. <laughs> this guy doesn't think deeply about anything. He just is like, okay, I got nothing else going on. No. And then, okay, so like that night he's thinking about it and he looks at his wine. And he notices that his wine is from Tbilisi. Yeah. Georgia. Okay. First of all, the wine glass that he has is way too fancy for drinking alone in the dark. That's not acceptable. <laughs> sure, that's a Star Wars glass yeah. at that point. This yes. is like a fancy like Riedel glass, whatever, with the like shapey thing going on. Also, the label, they show us really close for a second. It says dry orange wine from Georgia, from Tbilisi. But the wine in the glass is red. Just... Like, why not get a bottle of red? <laughs> All you're doing is telling us the next scene or the, a couple scenes later is going to be in Georgia, the country. That's it. Yep. That's it. But I'm so glad it is. Yeah, me too. Well, it, the, kept, the, it kept me going in this movie, I'm going to be yeah, honest. Yeah, there's some nice right. scenery in Georgia, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm yeah. sure they got some great tax rebates, too. And we'll get to those because those are going to be the plot of the movie by the end of this thing. Yes, they will be. <laughs> So, okay, but then we cut to this scene. I have no idea what the fuck this scene is doing here. There's a crazy guy and he's got a dead body and he's arguing with himself. And there's a there's a woman in her underwear that's like it with a gag strapped to a table. I I honestly I feel like the producer said, all right, I'll give you money as long as there's a scene where a girl's strapped to a table in her underwear. Oh, 100 percent. This is like weird, yeah. violent male fantasy shit. Yeah. You call him the Picasso butcher because he's like also a tortured artist. And apparently he's psychotic, right? Like they, they're trying to paint him as having psychosis because he's talking mm-hmm. to himself and like responding to stimuli, like internal stimuli that aren't in the room. But then, you know, spoiler alert, Randy Couture comes in and is like, you're a serial killer, so I'm going to kill you and add you to my army because it's an army of bad guys. And he just becomes completely cogent. Yeah. When he walks it. That's not how psychosis works. So <laughs> you can't. Like, it's just like, I don't this like. This took Kara out of the movie. Right? <laughs> this whole movie took me out of the movie. Yeah. I was never in the movie. <laughs> 
These symptoms don't line up. This is so stupid. This is dumb. Everything was great so far. This is dumb. <laughs> so, but yeah, but he comes in and he's like, you're a serial killer, so you're going to be on my team now. The serial killer attacks him with a cleaver, dodge, 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 he grabs him and he does the evil touch of veiny face or whatever, and he kills him. And now he's a demon too. Yeah. And I'm sure that's way too weird of a scene to never factor back into the movie in any appreciable fucking way. So I'm sure it's going to matter a lot. And while you're still believing that, we're going to take a quick break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of Angels Fallen, Warriors of Peace. <laughs> and Randy Couture is going to take a quick break and drive home and never be in this never movie Never show again. up in the <laughs> fucking movie again at any goddamn point. It's so You're weird. You're right. I'm just now realizing that. Oh, he's going to be a nomad in the land of Nod, I guess. He's just hanging <laughs> out. Okay, for three Somewhere days. Else. It's fine. Yep. <coughs> Noah. Noah, a little help. Caught in the band. I'll help. Dude, dude let, let, let me get you unwrapped. <coughs> Thanks. Thanks. That was a close one. That was a close Keith. one. You got to stop Thomas midgling yourself with these resistance bands. Happened so fast. Well, if, if you're looking for a good way to get in shape and without all the slapstick peril, why don't you just try FitBod? Oh, what's FitBod? It's an app that guides you through easy to follow workouts and they keep your exercises fresh by hitting all the different muscle groups. You can put in your fitness goals and the app customizes every workout adapting as you improve to avoid plateaus. Sounds pretty good, but has it worked for you? Sure has. I set it up to give me workouts that I could do from home without any fancy gym equipment, and it runs me through a series of different exercises that work for me. I like how I don't have to plan what to do next. It's all just right there for me. And you're happy with the progress you're making? Definitely. I can feel the improvement in my endurance, and it keeps track of my workout streaks to help keep me motivated. I can even do a workout when we're traveling. All I need is a phone and a little space in the hotel room. Yeah, lots of hotels have a gym, but you know, gym people go there. Gym people go there. Exactly. Gross. And the app has over a thousand demonstration videos so I can learn the right movements for any new exercise I'm doing. It's like having a personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper and easier to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. Great. I am sold. How do I sign up? Lock in and stay focused. Join FitBod to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription to try the app for free for seven days at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash GAM. All right. Thanks, Noah. No problem. So you got that wrapped around your neck pretty tight. Were you, were you trying to switch to a different exercise when you got caught in the band? Uh, yep. Exercise. Uh-huh. With no pants? They fell off. Okay, so where are they? They, they fell into the other room. Okay. <laughs> hey there, champ. I've got a little wager for you. Oh, really? What is it? You and me, one-on-one. -on -one. And if you so much as land a single punch, I'll give you this. Wow, boss. It's a bag with, I don't know, like, 30 cold bars in it. That's right. And it's all yours if you can hit me even a single time. Okay. Um, and if I lose? Then I get your soul. Huh. Um, yeah, no deal. Great. Then look, wait, 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 what? No, no deal. I said no deal, obviously. What do you mean, obviously? It's... I mean, you're very clearly a supernatural demon or something trying to trick me out of my soul. <laughs> Come on, I, what what makes you think that? I, well, you bet him his soul, man. Yeah. Only demons would do that. Yeah, oh. plus a gold bar weighs like 27.4 pounds. You're over there holding like 800 pounds of gold in one hand, no problem. Uh, is it, no, no, I'm not. You you just set it down. Just we all down. just saw you. Oh, okay. What, okay, but what? Uh, what if I offered you two bags? No, no, no. It, it's not about the number of bars. gold bars. You're obviously going to use some kind of like superhuman cheat, and you know you're going to win. It's just no bet. Not taking the bet. Oh, yeah, come on! My my whole plan kind of hinges on you taking this bet. No, nope, not a chance. All right, what if we do uh, best three out of five on Smash Brothers? Oh, I'm going to destroy you. Bet is on. I thought so. Oh man. Kirby's level. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And it's time for the big getting the team back together portion of the program. 
starting with Trigger. And we will meet him. He's working as a landscaper, and he's very concerned about this adorable dog. Oh, such a good dog. Yeah. He has a weird attempt at humor here. Yeah. This was, I think this was supposed to be comic relief, right? It was, and and you really genuinely couldn't tell. You were like, oh, is this, his, his PTSD doesn't allow him to work with animals now, or is that a... Right, yeah. Uh, like no, no, they're yeah. actually, we're supposed to be laughing here. Yeah, but he gets fired because he won't go in the yard with the dog in it, and he goes to leave, and damn it if Gabe isn't just waiting there with a couple of beers against the, the pickup truck. In case he got fired... <laughs> So yeah, so Gabriel like waited around the side of the truck off to the side and was like, "Oh, he's getting fired. Perfect, perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get him right after this." Or or maybe he was like, "Oh, you know what? I'll wait until he's done with that yard." You know, yeah. <laughs> and it was just lucky for just, him that he got fired. Have a couple of street coronas while I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. And can I just? I'm going to double speak for a second here. Choose whether or not you want to use this, but based on the big reveal at the end, which I will not mention now. Does this scene make fucking sense? Nothing, nothing <laughs> makes sense based on the big reveal at the end. Not Absolutely at all. nothing in the movie makes sense. You can't go back and watch this movie having known the reveal because nope. the movie doesn't work. Absolutely not. And, okay. Make and also, sure. <laughs> so, but we cut to like after Gabe has caught Trigger up on the plot because this writer was not even going to try to figure out how the fuck that conversation would go. <laughs> Right, so we just cut the trigger going, wow, man, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, he just, sure you've is. been recruited to help an angel reopen <laughs> the gates of hell, man. Right. And he's saying <laughs> he needs you because you're a really good demon sniper. He that's says gonna, you're the best sniper I know. <laughs> you're going to snipe the archangel? No, no. To be fair, this is the quote. You're the best marksman I know. Yes. What? The I really <laughs> hope people talk like this. Really? <laughs> I'm sure Kara, they do. The guy who wrote this fucking movie talks like that all the time. He knows, like, but he's got a list in his head of the five best marksmen that he knows. Yeah. This was like a 19 minute scene about the technicalities of a sniper rifle, and they had to cut it down to just this for sure. <laughs> this guy. Like use Chat GPT to write that. Like he doesn't understand human speech. No. Like, the, like it's like JD Vance ordering a donut. This whole yes, fucking script. Yes, yes, it is that. <laughs> like at one point he's like, I know this sounds pretty out there, and he goes, Not to me, Sarge. Not to me. <laughs> Why not? Have you fought really? demons to open the gates of hell before? What does sound out there to yeah. you? Is what I'm curious about now. <laughs> Not to me, sir. But yeah, but triggers in. He says, you're the only family I have left now. And it's like, oh, okay, all right, man. That's Oh, yeah. They try to make that a plot point and they, they touch do. on it two or three times. And we're all like, we don't care. You didn't develop any of these characters. Nope, nope, this doesn't count. <laughs> the exact same conversation, but with like a law instead of God sounds out there, Tim, for sure. Yeah, oh, right. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Fair. That's yeah. very yeah. So then we cut to Leia. Who's Leia? Well, she was very important. We didn't just completely forget to mention her because she didn't do anything in the other scene. She was the medic that worked for his unit in Iraq. We saw her in the flashback. But there's a knock on the door. Her husband goes to answer it. And no seconds later, he goes, <laughs> honey, there's a Sergeant Gabriel Wilson here to see you. Yeah. He's holding a big sign with all his information that yeah, I just read. I'm reading it to you right now. Yeah, The notebook. But then we flash to after he's explained the plot to her, too. And he tells her, he's like, you're the best medic in the business. What? <laughs> okay. I mean, medic makes a bit more sense than sniper, but like... For demon fighting, yeah. Do you have experience with evil sorcery injuries? Demon blood poison fixes? All right. If all of a sudden my veins turned black and got really big, what would you do then? <laughs> I am the best goddamn medic. It's so. also like, I can't get over how sexist it is because she clearly she's a good combat soldier. Right. Like she's fighting. That's all she does in the movie. She never like, yeah. yeah clearly she's got to be the medic. And then later there's another scene where it's like, are you the medic? And she goes, how do you know? And she's like, I just know. And yeah, come on. Like, what the fuck? Come on. But here, this is my favorite part. So he's like, are you going to come with us and fight the demon army? And she's like, I would, Sarge, but honey, come here and show this man your nice cancer head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You could just say the cancer. You don't have to yeah. show it, probably. Yeah, you don't. You don't need a prop. She 
brings down the kid. Yes. With the, and the, clearly this girl has hair down to her back shoved up in this bald cap. Yes! Yeah. She looks like the brain <laughs> from Pinky and the Brain. It's like amazing. Her head's just pulsing with it. Yeah. So presumably Gabriel was like, I don't believe you. And then she had to be like, <laughs> no, look, look at the cancer. You can see the cancer. There it is. Yeah. But then the best part is she doesn't actually have cancer. We're all saying she has cancer because <laughs> yes. she's bald. Yeah. No, she literally goes, I, I put ha 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 and all like I died laughing at this point. This uh -huh. is what I feel like I was tapping into what Eli is talking about when he squeals with joy the whole time he's watching. these yes. movies. Uh -huh. This was a uh -huh. moment of that. <laughs> Where she's like, the doctors don't know what it is or how to treat it. It's an unknown disease. <laughs> <laughs> While she compiles just like mountains of pills on the what are they? We're just, just giving we're her trying, these pills just in case. We're just going to try each one alphabetically <laughs> and see if any of them take it. Why is she bald? They're giving her chemo for an unknown disease or did the disease <laughs> cause her hair to fall out? I don't know. Do they but just think that... ice cream? When you, yeah, right. Could be, could just be gonna a have flu. A we're going to try radiation. See what happens. <laughs> They, 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 she says, can I have ice cream? She says, no, honey, ice cream's bad for your immune system. And you had some yesterday. <laughs> you yeah. had some? <laughs> I found that out last night. Well, you don't need your whole immune system. I don't think your immune system is affected by ice cream. I feel like that's me. <laughs> no, okay. that's what I, yeah. I put, since when is ice cream bad for the immune system? Uh, oh my God. The doctors don't know what it is or how to treat it. It's an unknown disease. That's a direct quote. And, and here's the fucked up thing is that the movie, like it'll never, like that's, there's not a reason for that, right? It could just be cancer. It could just be any normal thing. No, there's not a reason for her to even have a sick kid in this movie. Really, to be honest, yeah, <laughs> right. So fucking stupid. But but she's like, I can't fight with you. I have to take care of my cancer kid. And we're like, oh, all right, all right. So I guess you'll be back later, and it'll be a surprise. In like the very next scene, it really, so yeah, change my mind. Immediately yep. is like, yeah, no, I'm yeah, cancer kid, whatever. I'm on, I'm on board. Let's do it. Cancer schmancer. Yeah. But but first he has to recruit his the best damn boxer he knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> this recruiting stuff is so stupid. <laughs> I love your line here, Noah. This man just can't stop boxing. It's okay. So they, they keep having this, they're having this conversation, and the guy just keeps like throwing punches. Like just <laughs> He's air boxing. Yeah, shadow boxing. <laughs> And, or or because he's standing next to a heavy bag or I'll hit the heavy bag from time to hey time. Hey, man, can we talk anywhere else? Because you're really <laughs> distracted. Is it? Oh, no. Even when we walk away, you're just punching air. Okay. 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 And, and in the midst of this air boxing, I look, I pause it. We are only 30 minutes Oh, it's so sad. The, the runtime was the saddest part of this movie. Oh. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. And there was like you were you kept hoping that you're like maybe there's like 13 minutes of credits. There's been a lot of CGI, <laughs> but no. Did I accidentally present press half speed? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. No. Amazon doesn't have that button. But yeah, so he's <laughs> mother. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. So yeah, but but we also learned. So this is Paul. This is the guy who shot all of the hostages earlier, all of the prisoners, right? So why this dude is trusting him is beyond me. Well, he's a boxer and you need a boxer. Right. right. And see, that's you. That's you being good at plot because I would <laughs> never have even thought about it. I don't like, OK. Well, we also learn here that he's back on the junk. <laughs> right. So he's got a heroin addicted boxer on his fucking fighting demons team. Yeah, it's a... Why? It's a real performance-enhancing drug there. That oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So right, the stupid. boxer, Sonny, heroin. What? <laughs> right. But Paul's like, yeah, maybe a good way to stay clean is fighting an archangel and uh, the demon army. That sounds good. I'm on board. He's like, Re really? Yeah. You think that would... He's like, yeah, no, I think that would do it. I did, It's not self-serving at all. So Paul's in, and then they go to leave, and Gabe turns around and punches the punching bag real hard, too, because he also can punch... Right. Yep. yep. It's, he has a penis. There's a penis yes, in, the, yes. in there. There was a cut, and then owie! Ah, oh, my wrist. That's so heavy. Ah, oh, for my sure. Wrist. <laughs> my wrist. <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm not gonna be able to control wrists. So god damn it. So then we cut to Gabe. Oh, and by the way, listener, if you don't think there's gonna be some fucking A class wrist control before this fucking movie <laughs> is over, you don't know what kind of film we're dealing sure with. Okay. The fuck. 
is I feel like maybe Randy Couture got sent home because he taught risk control too hard to everybody yeah. for the rest of the thing. And they were like, the just, fuck is risk you gotta control? go. What are you guys talking about? Risk control, it's the it's thing that the like, dumb. you know, MMA gym rat guys always it's talk what, about. They're like, look, I'm controlling your wrist and now karate chop to the neck. Karate chop to the neck. It's what, it goes in men's brains instead of executive function, Kara. Yeah, I thought that was um, the reason yeah. I so, didn't yeah. know that term. <laughs> Okay, moving on. But then we're going to cut to Tbilisi, Georgia, where the rest of the movie will take place. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, why are they in Georgia? Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is insane. They're in Georgia, apparently based on Balthazar's clue with the wine. Yeah. They just flew to Georgia. That's all I could figure out. Yeah. I wanted them to get there and it was just a coincidence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Balthazar's to show up again. No, that was just... I like orange wine from Georgia. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> slew here. We have this vacation on the books for weeks. That's why. Um, yeah, right, right. I no, but this this was like it is weird because the rest of the movie he gives him relatively overt clues and he's like, I don't understand. You have to spell it out for me. But this one he yeah. got right, and and so also if this is so fucking. They're sitting around some foot fountain because they're they're like obligated in order to get the tax refund they want or they're, they're after or whatever, they have to show seven of these 15 lovely Tbilisi landmarks in their movie. Which, thank fuck they did. It yeah. made this movie 10 times more entertaining. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to go to Georgia. But, Literally, right. at this point, I started Googling all these. It, no, yes, was, I, I'm planning spots. my trip instead of watching the movie at no, this right? point. Same, same. Smart. That's why I knew how many of the top 15 TripAdvisor <laughs> things to do in Tbilisi were in this movie. <laughs> so, but but they're sitting around this lovely fountain in Tbilisi and they're like, so why are we in Georgia? And I'm like, why didn't you guys talk about this on the plane? You didn't go over this? But I would say before the plane. Even, or or the airport. You don't sure, get on yes. the plane Wait. unless you're fully <laughs> on board with the plan to defeat the demons. <laughs> No, we'll, we'll figure it. We'll figure it out in the air, or maybe after, whatever. It's after, well, we'll, 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 this is a sort of a fountain type conversation, and then <laughs> all of a sudden, out of fucking nowhere, Leia shows up. So somehow she, she's in now, by the way. But 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 somehow she knew that a they were in Tbilisi, and b they were at this fountain <laughs> having a chat. <laughs> Why would she know that? Yeah, I don't know about you, but if I'm asked to do a job, I'm not going to do it on my own dime. Right, yeah. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to make sure that my airfare is covered. You would think. Yeah. You would think. She's got a She's got a kid that's sick with something she doesn't even know what it is. Yeah. She needs to be saving Unknown money Unknown cinnamonoma. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but Leia is, we're going to find out, a scryer. So maybe that's how she knows about the fountain. Oh, you're right. That's right. She, she probably psychically got a clue as to which fountain to go to. You think she's been at that fountain uh, for like three fucking days? Like, God, Jesus. Fuck her scryer power, we're going to get to it, is my favorite. It's, it's is that a real movie. word? <laughs> it's scry? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I know it from Magic the Gathering originally. Of course you do. <laughs> I know it from being an idiot that believed in a bunch of woo tarot bullshit for a long oh, fucking God. time. So. I literally think, and I, I say this later on and it makes more sense later on, but now feels like a good time to share it. I think that the guy who wrote this movie just really wanted that last D&D &D session to like go down in history. <laughs> like this is, that is what, he transcribed his last D&D &D session. I think you might be right. I'm so proud of it. Eli's standing right behind you. <laughs> I know, he's always there. Yeah, right. He's in the closet somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So they, so the, now they're, they're driving around Georgia and they're all going like, wow, this is such a lovely country. It's a really nice place for a vacation. You don't, you don't <laughs> think to please see, you know, right away when you think of Eastern European destination. But, but then like, as they're saying that, as they're going like, wow, this is such a beautiful country. They're showing the most drab, gray, boxy, Soviet ass looking apartment complexes you can imagine. Yeah. Right. Like there's like all around them. There's these gorgeous Caucasus mountains and shit that they could be showing. But no, they're showing these stupid ass, boring looking apartments. OK, they got to make us scared of the demons. Oh, that's that must oh, be. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, that's be what a, we see. Sweaty guy. There's about to be a sweaty <laughs> demon for half a second who's just like demon 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 okay I'm done. yep yep and then he disappears he's a weird character because he comes up a lot sweaty guy like from here until the end of the movie he's in like every fight scene yeah but he never like demonizes he just always looks strung out he's just a sweaty guy yeah yeah, yeah exactly weird. <laughs> I don't get I don't get him. So then we cut to Leia in her hotel that night. So apparently in order for her to use her psychic powers she has to be 
underwater. They did not <laughs> steal that from Stranger Things. That was their idea. They had that idea first. <laughs> So she, she's now she's filling her sink up in the in the hotel and sticking her face in it until she has visions. She can't yep. scry without a little bit of water above her face line yep. or something. So that's what's happening here. I'm so bad at fantasy that literally this is an earnest sentence that I wrote here. In this movie, schizophrenia is contagious. <laughs> I was trying to make sense of why she was having visions. That's how not into fantasy I am. Amazing. <laughs> okay, based on this power, do you think when she just like washes her face real quick, she sees like a tiny amount of vision every time? She's like, uh, yeah, oh, oh, I missed. I think so. Most of that again, because later in the film, she says, "I've been having these visions since Iraq." Yeah, yeah. Like if she caught out <laughs> so, in the rain huh. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, she goes swimming. She's just vision and no vision, vision, no vision, vision. No, it's <laughs> really rough. So also, by the way, so her visions are so hilariously literal. So she, her vision is a fucking rebus puzzle, right? That we get it's here. So silly. Mm -hmm. It's so yeah. So we'll get together because the because the next fucking scene is the is the bar where they're all trying to puzzle out her vision. Yeah, so just really quick, her vision was, as I saw it, a sperm on a chalkboard for a second. 100% that was sperm. Right? Sure. Okay, yep. mm -hmm. that yep. was one sperm on a chalkboard. And then the name Lila, but like a whole bunch of times written down like on a, like on an over-focused idea board where all yes. the person thought of was Lila. Like a stalker's idea board, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was very like beautiful mind. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, uh -huh. yeah. And then there was a, as I saw it, a neon angel outside of a strip club that has angel in the name. And I was yep. like, okay, well, that's a stupid fucking vision. Cut to a strip club. <laughs> well, first, first we have to get a whole scene where they figure that out. Oh my oh, God. Oh yeah, we got to a different bar and then cut to a strip club. Yeah. yeah, that's how long this movie takes to get there. They're so fucking dumb. So, okay. So the sperm is the letter D in the Georgian alphabet. I went on a quite a Georgia has its own alphabet rabbit hole here. It's very cool. It looks like Elvish. Yeah. It's also on the neon sign at the strip club, the sperm. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> no. Of it is. Oh, oh, I guess I guess. <laughs> so then but then so they've got the letter D and then they've got Lila and this is an actual goddamn line from the movie quote D Lila. Delilah. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid another subtle that was leia because she's smart <laughs> yes right no, she's <laughs> so to be clear balthazar or god or whatever wasn't just like go to delilah the strip club the the plan was i'm gonna put a fucking rebus inside of a sink in a hotel room, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and maybe this will get him there yeah yep yeah uh -huh. and and they get there slowly like yeah it no takes not a any while. fucking we're all there already and i'm like yes Please explain your thought process in even more painstaking detail. This is riveting. Also, I love like, watching this in a film. The, the stakes <laughs> of this movie are the end of humanity, right? That's what they've right. established. If they, if the bad guys win, humanity ends. Why would you give them a fucking Remus puzzle? Why wouldn't you just say, hey, you know where you should go is the Delilah Strip Club, you fucking idiot. Exactly. Also, <laughs> what is what are the, so, yeah, so like, why would you need a code that's ridiculous? But also, if you're doing the code, Delilah is spelled with an H at the end in the name of the strip club. We see it. Mm. Why not put the fucking H in Delilah <laughs> inside of your Rebus? I don't know. I, it's, it, 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 it's so inexplicably stupid. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lilac minus C. Plus what do you think H. that plus is? H. That's Lila yeah. plus H. Well, yeah, this Delilah. Is like the, this is like the Sunday puzzle, you guys. Yes. This isn't, you know, <laughs> this isn't a Tuesday or a Wednesday. <laughs> Gotta have a gimmick. <laughs> if you're doing a themer, you gotta have it tied together better. Come on. Rex Parker's mad at you. And add an H to the end of all the yeah, the long ones, the long clip. <laughs> so they're they're at the Delilah strip club now. <laughs> yeah. And for the most man, I, I was embarrassed to be a man this whole time. I was like, God, why did we invite Kara for this fucking yeah. movie? Oh yeah, I wrote this. <laughs> this is the first thing I wrote in the scene. Guys, I really want to know. I'm gonna take a second here. What does overt sexism feel like to feminist men while they're watching it? Like, I'm genuinely curious because for me during the scene, <laughs> my eyes were mostly rolling and then like it was punctuated by moments of rage, but mostly it was an eye roll. Like, what does it feel like for you guys to watch this? If I was describing my emotion, it would be um, 
the noise. <laughs> yeah, like that. It's just so, like a big long cringe. That's, yep. yep. Okay. Let me let me actually I give, give you my entire like inner monologue during this scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope Lucinda doesn't come in. Oh, I hope Lucinda doesn't come in. Oh, I hope Lucinda doesn't. Come in. <laughs> So there's something weird. There's like weird internal guilt and shame because like you are you are part of this system that you never asked to be part of. Yeah, really. <laughs> You're like, Ugh. yeah. And so, but of course, Lucinda did come in. By the way, at exactly this <laughs> moment, and I was like, those are Christian boobs. The um, God damn it! <laughs> it's to save mankind from evil. Yep. It's serious. Also, so I have to explain this one too, in case anybody's ever like looking through my my search history. So the the song. That is playing here. Oh yeah, she fucked me like fuck me like a porn star. She fucked she me, fucked like, me a like a porn star, star which I like in exchange for pizza. I don't know what that means, right? Yeah. But like <laughs> every once in a while, the subtitles would just come up on the lyrics and just go inaudible, and I'm like, uh, yeah, you lazy fucks, just look up the fucking lyrics. So then, like a fucking idiot, I googled she fucked me like a porn star, thinking I was going to find the <laughs> lyrics to this song. That wasn't the first hit. <laughs> So that's bad SEO, but yeah, because right. of that song. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, no. So I owe the subtitle person an apology for my previous <laughs> notes, I guess. <laughs> so okay. So they split up. They're like, we should all split up and wander slowly around the uh the strip club so that the camera has all kinds of reasons to zoom in on asses and whatnot. Yeah. They're yeah. looking for Movies. the warriors of peace now. Mm -hmm. So the idea is like, okay, everybody split up and look for fucking Peace warriors. <laughs> like Whatever that looks like. Hey, anybody warring? I feel like they never explain it. No. Do they ever in this movie, like it, all of a sudden they just know they need to find a band of peace warriors that they're supposed to connect with. Yeah. Is I that ever think, talked about before? I think Cuba Gooding Jr. at one point says you must find the warriors of peace. But uh, I thought okay. he meant like his group of people would then be the warriors of peace once he had assembled his team. Right, I thought so too. I yeah. guess that's just bad writing. Like the writer didn't realize that's what we would think. Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of a thing. But instead there's a whole other warriors of peace they have to find. Mm -hmm. Also, how did Leia immediately know that Delilah, once the Rebus was solved, was she was like, Delilah, the strip club right here in Tbilisi that I know about. <laughs> yeah, they, right. <laughs> 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 in Tbilisi, go, this is where I used to take leave, you guys. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, this is the yeah. sixth best strip club in all of Tbilisi, as it turns out. <laughs> Respect. So yeah, so and then oh, so as they're split up, uh, Trigger just goes to watch the boobs. Paul, the boxer guy, he goes to the bartender and he says, "What's your best drink?" Oh, I hate you <laughs> so much. You guys love this. I scene. hate you so much already. Just name the drink. You just order a drink. <laughs> you get like you get like three syllables. Come on, let's go. I don't fucking drink, so I did. I I was like. I assume this is a really stupid question, but I don't know. It, it's not a fucking mixology bar at the strip club. You're getting a beer or what? You're getting a Coors Light, man. Let's go. So, yeah, he's like, no, the best drink here at this club is called the Dante's Inferno. And I'm like, oh, I think that's a clue. Yeah. Do you guys also notice in this scene that they didn't have multicam because I don't know, maybe they were all broken or out of commission. So they were like, how do we shoot the scene where we can see both of their faces at the same yes. time? So his back is to the bar while he's talking he's to him. He's not talking to the bartender. He's the worst. I'm going to talk yeah, away weirdest. from you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? And then, oh, so we cut to Trigger with the stripper and he's going to give her a hundred dollars, but he puts it in her mouth or no, sorry. He puts it in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote, he lady in the tramps a hundo. It's, gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's gross. It's so fucking gross. Oh, and she's so uninterested. I love how they're like, okay, we want genuine. And she's like, I got you. So I think <laughs> she's the best actress of this whole movie. She's so uninterested. She's like, you are very stupid. I am very smart. And she goes, oh, it's lonely. <laughs> so he like gives her more money. I'm like, God, men are <laughs> But just then, an action sequence sneaks up behind Gabe and it's a fight. We get we get our first example of wrist control. Oh, I see. Yeah, yep. when Leia takes down the guy, she grabs him by the hand and she goes like starts throwing him all over the place because she's got the wrist. Once she got the wrist, really, you can control the whole body. I just the entire motion of the body <laughs> emanates from the wrist. Everything is that. 
I, I still don't see it. I wasn't really watching. Yeah. Okay. The minute it's so it's there's something in my brain. It's like a protective mechanism. But the minute <laughs> that like a fight scene breaks out, all of my neurons are like, "Don't be poisoned. Just look away." And then, it's probably best. And then I just know when it's over, and I'm like, "Okay, I didn't need to see any of that for the plot to move forward." I'm gonna check out some hiking in Georgia a little bit more. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I'm man. literally like, "Who's still standing and who's on the ground at the end of that scene?" That is the only data I need. Right. Okay, so. That's fair. Here's my favorite part of this fucking bite. So the the good guys are losing, right? The the bad guys are getting the best of them. When all of a sudden the warriors of peace show up and and fight along their side, right? Which they've been there the whole time. It was like the bartender. Yeah, and just other and people like, there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. whatever number of Georgian actors they needed to hire to get the fucking tax rebate from the tourism bureau, right? And this I don't understand real quick, though, because in the lore of like Christianity, because later it's like very clear why certain people were on this side versus that side, because these are the good guys and those are the bad guys. Why are the good guys just hanging out in a strip club? You, OK, so that that we explain in the next scene, they were laying oh. a trap for the demon. Oh, you're right. It's a sting in the den of iniquity. Yeah. Yes. Uh, OK. So, but this is where they explain that they had they had started a whole fucking strip club as a way of like a, to run a sting operation on the demons, which seems to me like bullshit. They like they're saying that because Leia's there, right? They they yeah, they don't want them to know. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. yeah, even the good guys are bad guys. Um, yeah, and they're really bad at being angry. The covert operation guys, they're like, mm, you ruined it. But it's cool. We still like you. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, so right. Weird to see. It. So, but then they all introduced themselves and I'm like, I'm not remembering four more characters. Fuck you. Fuck you. You got, uh, there's priest and there's bartender and there's fucking biceps. And then there's that other guy, the fucking, oh, one of, what, one of the guys is an atheist, right? Or he was an atheist until he yeah. started fighting demons. Far Farouk. Farouk is an atheist. Fun fact. Farouk is Arabic for one who distinguishes truth from falsehood. Oh, is <laughs> <laughs> Made me very happy that they accidentally named him that. Oh, that's awesome. Oops. This is, yeah. So mostly in my notes, I just have him as WAP 2, WAP 3. That's a warrior of peace 2, 3, etc. This is where the Catholic priest tells um, to Leia that she's a scryer, right? Yeah, I don't like that word. It's a very ugly word. It's an ugly word, yeah. Yeah, and he's he's doing it like flirty too. He's priest. It's father, father here, father padre. Like, <laughs> so... You're a scryer. And like when uh, when a real line in your movie is the same as the line from the guy trying to get laid at Bonnaroo, it's not a good sign. <laughs> is it, yeah. You scry here often? Or, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and Gabe's like, but Balthazar said that you would help us. And they're like, uh, no, no. We're more of a like show up mid fight scene and help out when you think we've abandoned you kind of a kind of a team up type of guys. And they're like, oh, all right. Well, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, what was the point of any? Oh, God. Yeah, because the, because the writer thinks it's really cool when the when the like the other guys show up and you're not expecting. It, I guess this is out of your jurisdiction. I wanted to use the word jurisdiction just now. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, but the point is like the warriors of peace are being like, yeah, we get our orders from up top, the big guy, not a human, like <laughs> good Junior's ghost, which apparently is who gave you this important information. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so that night, and again, this is such a minor thing, but it's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen a movie get this goddamn wrong. So Leia's doing her own research, like you do, when she gets an email. And this movie doesn't know how email works, right? Or I'm sorry, maybe somebody has this, like a system where every time you get an email, it appears at the center of your fucking screen, blurs out all the stuff you're working on and demands that you deal with it now. Yeah, she's using the native mail app on her Mac. And it does do that. It's garbage. <laughs> oh my That's God. why everybody always has to disable it from launching automatically when they turn on the Outlook computer. Outlook Express? How yeah, she's basically, yeah, yeah. Woof. It's, it's, yeah. it's mail. It's Apple Mail. Is what I she's saw it using. and I was like, this is so inconvenient. <laughs> it couldn't possibly exist in the world. But yeah, apparently, okay oh, then. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. It's there. So, okay. So, but she's getting an, a, an important email and then we get Paul and Gabe playing pool and Paul is going like, oh, we should probably give up and, and throw in the towel. We're never going to win. And then Leia comes in and she's like, I, I got a clue as to where we're supposed to go in the next scene. Yeah, because the email, by the way, says, are you a warrior? I have something for you <laughs> and your team. Yes. <laughs> it's very targeted. Scam. It's weird. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've been trying to reach you about your right. evil demon weapons. Yeah. Don't click the link. You're a scryer. So, <laughs> no, right. You're she a scryer need to be and you're clicking on the email that has a subject line that says, <laughs> are you a warrior? <laughs> Splash a little water on your face. Jesus. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. So, okay, then we're going to go to the saddest goddamn <laughs> weapons room you have ever seen in an action movie, right? Because, like, the guy who wrote this movie <laughs> was envisioning that fucking, the walls from that scene in Matrix 2 where there's just weapons everywhere. But yeah. they don't have that. There's just, like, one sad little light box that has the six guns we've already seen in this movie in a little fucking backlit diorama. And then another <laughs> that has two fucking swords in it. Two swords in a shoebox with a flashlight on it. Yeah. Yeah, but everything's really white. Somebody's like, ah, oh, we only have two. My mom made me sell the rest of my swords. I only have two. Left. <laughs> she said, I can't live in a basement if I don't sell the swords. Yeah, right, right. So, but they walk into the sad little weapons room, and who's there but Denise Richards? It took me a minute, though. To realize that was her. I, I didn't even know who that was, but uh, I looked her up. Yeah, oh. so she was in a couple of movies I've seen, I guess. But yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, wait, I recognize her. And then I was like, oh, my God, holy shit, it's her. But she's had lots of plastic surgery. But like, honestly, her plastic surgery is pretty good. Yeah, she she's looks looking pretty, great. She looks all right. She looks hot. I like her glasses in this. Yeah. She, like, she's good wardrobe. I love how they're just like clearly just dramatic glasses, right? She takes them off to make a point and it doesn't affect the way she's seeing things in any way. <laughs> I think what happened is they were like, we want you to be in our movie. And she was like, no. And then they were like, can you pretty please be in our movie? And she was like, only if I look really hot and do really cool shit and I'm only in it for one scene. She was like, one question, are there sword gloves? And do I and get sword like, gloves? Yeah. Yes. They were like, yeah. Actually, there are sword gloves. She's on board. So yeah, so but she's in a, a lab coat and she's there to give each of them their signature weapon. Like the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, this American <laughs> weapons expert has a lair in Georgia. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Where she's just waiting around for these people to show up her whole life. It's the best. And also she's like the substitute weapons guy because they're like, well, I thought we were going to see Newton. She's like, well, Newton is on vacation, so I'm Deborah, <laughs> so I'm going to be filling in in this yeah, instance. Yeah, what is the point of that? I don't oh, know. I'm, I'm going to, this is like a barbershop scenario. I'm going to wait for Newton over here. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> Probably going to give me a fire sword that doesn't even fucking work or yes. something. So. <laughs> and that's what happens. Yeah, so, yeah she gives gives each of them a weapon. She says, you're the sharpshooter, right? And he's like, I guess I get a gun of some sort. She's like, nope, throwing knives. He's like, really? Because because that's a because once you throw them, you got to go over there and get them. That seems like it would be a <laughs> dumb thing for me to get. And then I guess Leia gets... A bow and arrow, and also a tube of blue miracle goo. Yeah, she gets she gets elixir that can heal even unknown diseases. What do you think? So, she's going to use that? So for? weird, it's crazy that you would have that. Good that. that yeah. Oh, so I like that it's explained that the blue miracle vial doesn't always work. It's just like, yeah, here's so your weapon. Pointless. You get Selected. this little blue thing. It doesn't always work. Good luck. And also she says, and it can't bring people back from the dead. So like when characters die, go ahead and be sad, right? Like you have to be sad. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, oh, and fucking Paul gets a big chonky gun, right? Like a chonker of a fucking pistol. That's his weapon. Like it's just like, you get a bow and arrows. You get throwing knives. You get a, a fucking Glock. And everybody's like, what? Why? <laughs> I get. Would he get this? this Zach Morris's cell phone? I don't understand what to do with it. <laughs> the movie actually knows how silly this thing looks because yeah. Denise Richards does a little physical bitch. She's about to hand the phone gun thing and she's like, hello, hang on. She holds it up to her ear. <laughs> so it's for bad. you. And yep. she hands it to her. <laughs> yeah. And then, and she's like, but you, Gabe, you're the main character. And he's like, oh, so I guess I get a sword. She's like, you're, you get a sword. And she hands him the tiniest little, it's not quite a knife, but it's definitely not a sword sword. Yeah, I wrote, Gabriel gets a sword that challenges his manhood. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is what happens in the scene, right? He gets the flaming letter opener. Yeah. <laughs> so she says, this is your flaming sword. And he pulls it out and he's like, it's not on fire. And she says, oh, well, you already paid for it. It's not under warranty. So I guess that's what you uh, have now. Mm -hmm. And also, and he turns, she's got this fucking grenade launcher there. He's like, you sure I can't have the... um." The grenade launcher. She's like, nope, that is my grenade launcher, and uh, and fuck off. 
for no reason in my lair because you're about to save humanity. Right. But I need this just in case. And it won't. And this is Chekhov's fucking grenade launcher. We will never see it again. Yes. I was like, so is Denise Richards going to like come along and help with the yeah, giant like use it like the, the end, week, no. you expected her to show up with a fucking grenade launcher, but no, no. They, they, had... they could only pay her for one day. Two, yeah, one one day, two scenes. Yeah, <laughs> so, two scenes. Yeah, they shot him both the same day. She's in the same outfit. Yeah, she's gonna do another two minutes and then drive home with Randy Couture. Yeah, yeah. yep. So yeah, but they go to leave. Trigger sticks around to flirt with her, so she puts a knife against his testicles, which is nice. Yeah, she she would like to not be flirted with. And then we go. We're inside a church. Oh, it's fucking beautiful. It is. Yeah, like it's annoying how beautiful every scene in this movie is. I'm like, oh, it's so wasted on this movie, right? right. Yeah. So, but but Gabe is going to ask God where the next scene is. They have these very cool statues of like the like the lady holding the skull and holding the sword and shit. Fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. And then there's there's a bang, and I'm like, oh my god, is that Jesus hiding behind a fucking? But no, it's it's Cuba Gooding <laughs> Jr. again. So he's there to explain the significance of the lady statues, and in order to do so, we flash back to his backstory which took place on Middle Earth or something. Yeah, he's he's fighting winged demons on a bridge that is specifically made for fighting winged demons and <laughs> nothing else. It doesn't right. bring you anywhere. I thought there were dragons at first. Yeah, no, there was a was, I was, there I was, was like there's dragons there's in the Bible? Pterodactyl demon and <laughs> there is humanoid there, demon. there are dragons. There are dragons in the Bible, of course they're fucking No, yeah. he, when I saw this bridge I was like <laughs> Oh, you know, if you do a fatality on this level, you get to fight Noob Sabot. <laughs> that was just for Heath, Gary. Mortal know. Kombat fans are loving this. this with it, watch this movie anyway, yeah. <laughs> also, by the way, so, so Kuba's supposed to be fighting these three CGI demons all at the same time, and he is so half-assing this action sequence. He's like, oh, y'all yeah. didn't pay me enough to move fast, so he, I am not going to do that. He looks like... He expected a winged demon fight during his afternoon in real life. <laughs> Just like hanging out. He's like, yeah, okay. Stab, great. But then we back out of the flashback. Apparently what we've learned from that is that like Gabe, Cuba Gooding Jr. was once a warrior and something, whatever, right? And there's a and there's a Dinah and a Jofio. Is there? Oh, right. Does that matter? Yeah, so the big statue... Cuba Gooding Jr. poofs into existence to talk to Gabriel. And he's like, that uh, statue's Diana. Don't call her Diana, though. Only me and God can call her that. <laughs> Gabriel's yeah. like, I didn't call her anything yet. It's yeah, Joe like, Field you call her to you. All right, cool, man. Can you give me, you know, not vague wine clues real quick? Did any of that matter? None of that was no. a clue, was it? No, none no. of that mattered at all. Unrelated. So, but he he does give an overt clue. Yes. He's like, by the way, it's you need to remember the demons don't have souls. And they can't hear music. Right. Yes. And then that never matters. Yes. No, no, no. He says, okay, so here's the, <laughs> the clue is so fucking stupid. He goes, they can't hear the music, so they have to rely on the spoken word. And he goes, could you just tell me something all the way? And he's like, no. And then he disappears. Nope. So Does keep, that matter? Yes. Keep that in mind. I'll, oh, okay. I'll, I'll, all right. I'll, I'll tell you when it pays off. I don't remember it mattering. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They're going to try to make it pay off. So like music is the language of the soul. Demons have no souls. So they only so they just do use language. spoken language, but not musical. Like all of us, we all use spoken language. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah. at this point, I was like, okay, this is awesome. If this turns into a musical because yes! they're singing. Right. So That's that what the, I was hoping the demons for. don't know what they're talking about. They can talk in code by singing. That would have been amazing. Or at the very least, at the end of the movie, you expected one of them to go, I'm going to sneak up behind the right. demons. Thank and you. In that I have almost the that left. Note. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but they Instead, never Instead, they're doing the military do. hand signal thing with like, yeah. I point, go, go, go. I was no. like, just sing it, man. Yes, obviously. Yeah. Sing it out. All right, well, it sounds like we're just one dumb riddle away from some more kicky, kicky, punchy, punchy, so we'll pause for another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Kara's already gone. Can the warriors of peace bring in the laundry before the rain begins? Can our heroes find the place where the forest's heart beats the loudest? What has four legs in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three in the evening? Find out the answers to complete fucking nonsense like that when we return for the pew-pew-tastic conclusion of Angels Fallen, Warriors of Peace. Hey, Noah. 
Do you think it's a good time to buy Bitcoin? I do not. No. Oh, okay. So you're thinking Ethereum, IOTA, Doge to the moon? No. What do you think? No, I'm not thinking any of that. Why, why are you buying crypto? Yeah. So I tried canceling one of my subscriptions and it seems easier if I just, you know, don't have a bank account at all. Uh, Heath, if you're looking to get rid of your unwanted subscriptions, why don't you just try Rocket Money? What's Rocket Money? Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Sounds pretty helpful. So how much do you think you're paying in subscriptions every month? Yeah, I'm not even sure. I was just trying to get rid of one, and it was impossible. Well, the answer for most people is probably more than you think. Over 74% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about. I know I definitely did. I was paying for three different streaming services that I don't even use anymore. But thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about. All right. Seems like Rocket Money would be pretty popular. They are. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all the app's features. All right. I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Thanks, Noah. Hey, no problem. So uh, what was the subscription that you wanted to uh, cancel? Yeah, it's a, it's a fitness app. Oh, is that their site on your laptop right there? Don't don't worry about it. Don't look at the laptop. David Carradine using a Bowflex? You are. <laughs> <laughs> so then out of nowhere a ghost is drinking wine in my kitchen and he told me i have to get a squad together and defeat a fallen angel and his army of demons in order to save humanity and you are the best sniper i know so yen uh, oh you're 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 serious yeah. yikes yeah. no i am not in so we got to defeat a fallen angel and his army of demons in order to save humanity. And you are one of the best snipers I know. So, Yen? I mean, obviously not. Are you serious? Get the fuck out of here, man. Dude, what? And you are the best heroin-addicted boxer that I know. So, you in? Nah. Nah, kind of doing my thing here. Have you tried Paul? I mean, he's he's okay at boxing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll try Paul. Okay, so that's the situation, Leia. And Paul, by the way, is totally on board. So we do have a boxer. That's great. So what about you? You in? So here's the thing, Gabriel. My daughter has cancer. Oh. Wow, uh, that, that's that's really rough. I'm 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 really sorry to bother you about this. I, oh, I shouldn't have even. I'm in. But, I, yeah, no, I'm in. But, wait, what? Seriously? Yeah, she's like a real bummer. Uh, oh, she's a real bummer. Um, okay, well, yeah, I, it's the end of humanity if we don't beat the demons. So I guess that like yeah, yeah whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Let's just go. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Now. Hun, you got to take her to chemo. I'm doing a thing with demons. Well, don't do that. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with an answer to everybody who was going like, hold on a second. That's not all the Denise Richards we get, is it? Yeah. And by action, you mean <laughs> Denise Richards is just standing behind a desk. At yep. this very silly, like, weapons depository. <laughs> yeah. Playing with her iPad. That's, like, most of her day. Unless, like, you know, peace warriors show up needing personalized weapons. Well, right. It's very infrequent that people need a signature weapon. But, yeah, the fucking Edna molds of Christianity over here. But the lights go out. Luckily, she has her night vision Nintendo virtual boy right there. <laughs> yep. She's right. prepared. Yeah, that happens a lot. Demons, they, they always cut the power first. And then yeah, right. No, come and uh, not attack you exactly, but just kind of taunt you and tell you what their plot is, even though it's not, you know, the end of the movie yet. So you can know. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so, the, so this demon attacks her, yells some exposition. But luckily, right next to her virtual boy were her 
sword gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. They're just like wrist mounted. You have four small sword knife things on each hand now. And she at- attacks the demon with them. Yeah, it works. Well, no. So what I love is that they show they can't help but show why this is a terrible weapon because she has to like put on gloves to use them <laughs> instead of just picking up a sword. So she puts on these gloves and I'm like, yeah, hold on. I can't get the second one because I put the first one on. And I can't get the wrist <laughs> part down. Can you help? Can you this just is like mittens? I love that. Like, it. You, so you wrote like, no, you wrote like, what if your butt itches while you're wearing those? Right? This reminds me. <laughs> I had this conversation with like a dear friend. I remember when I was in college and his dad was an idiot and his dad was always in, trying to invent new like I don't know, objects, but none of them were good ideas. <laughs> so you're the dad from Gremlins? <laughs> it's amazing. You know what are great ideas? Gloves, swords, sword he had, gloves. He had this invention. <laughs> it was a fork and one side of the fork was a knife blade. And then the back of the fork <laughs> was a salt shaker. <laughs> so Wait, what? He all, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And he was like, so when you like eat your food, it just like cuts the inside. I can't be bothered to take time out from my very fast eating to be shaking salt all the time. Let's streamline this. Cut my steak with the same utensil I used to eat it. But be very careful Amazing. when I put it in my mouth. Yes. <laughs> so is there like a spring-loaded block of the salt or else you're just always salting? You just you can't turn it upside down. Every time you put it in your mouth, you get a little more salt. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. It just keeps going in his eye. All right. All right. This keeps anyway. Amazing. Oh, it hurts. So yeah, but so she fights the demons with her sword glove. She beheads it. That is the end of Denise Richards in the movie. Yeah. She goes back to the iPad. Fuck, I, ah, I scratched the screen. That's what happens with sword gloves. So now this is amazing. So now we're going to get to pay off for that, this spoken word thing. You see, where has a lot of words? Libraries. <laughs> is that, wait, that's the payoff? That's the that's, payoff. That was the clue. Yep. Oh my God. He actually says, well, you know, he was talking about them relying on words. And I'm like, he specifically said spoken word even. But no. What's the biggest word repository in the world? <laughs> Libraries. <laughs> Where none of them are spoken. Yes. Except yes. in your mind. Exactly. What the <laughs> fuck? It was so bad. But so, yeah. So they're all walking around Tbilisi with their weapons, by the way. Le- uh, Leia is just walking around with a goddamn bow and arrow in <laughs> her hands. But they walk, they break into the library. Library is not open. But they're they're sure enough in his interpretation of this clue that they break into the library because of all the words in it. Oh my god, really? That's so bad. <laughs> so- I thought they had to go to the library to look up something to like crack some clues. You would I think- made this oh, more no. interesting than it was. Oh, no. They're going where the words are. <laughs> And they literally tiptoe around the library interminably. They're like, let's all split up yeah. so that they can film each of us individually tiptoeing around the library. Minutes, plural. plural. Yeah, there's a there's a tiptoeing montage. It's supposed <laughs> to be all serious because it's like, we're Marines, basically. You know, we know how to like splay out and like covertly take over an area. So they're tiptoeing through the library. And we watch Gabriel like, Tiptoe militarily into the card. The card catalog. Ca- he Eric. checks. He like <laughs> opens one drawer and looks in it. Like I'm checking the card catalogs. What are you looking? And then make sure there's all- no demons in right. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tiny drawer full of paper. <laughs> And this one, right? There's 4,000 drawers. He's like, well, this one doesn't yeah. have any demons in it. Well, and then, oh, look at that. They don't use Dewey Decimal here because it's a different country. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, the have, the, they have right. their own alphabet. They have sperm letters. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so, and then they all gather back up, right? So nothing <laughs> happens no when they're all part. They, they all split up. They're like, let's split up and walk slowly through the, the fucking library. And then they all meet up again. And they're like, well, that was fucking nothing. 
I guess. Yeah, because this is the point where they forgot <laughs> to finish the script. So they're like, we're just going to improv it from here right. on Right. Just do what I say. We'll shoot the scene. <laughs> we're writing it as we go. Nothing happened in our scene. Yeah, we have to write it. We have to write our scene. And <laughs> they come, they're like, now demons are here? Cool. Yeah, right. No, they all get together and then the demons attack them once they're all back together. I'm like, oh, it seems like a terrible time for you guys to attack them. And how did the demons show up? Well, they're in hell, but not in hell because they're the the portal to hell is closed. Right. But we yeah. maybe forgot that. So there's <laughs> oh, they do. In they, the yes, floor. they do rise up through something. By, well, it's like pre hell. Service entrance a- made of sparks. <laughs> in, it only pops up in uh, where the words are. Areas. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. And also, like, this is so unintentionally fucking silly and hilarious because everybody's fighting with like Dungeons and Dragons weapons, except for Paul, who's just over here going, Pip. Up with his <laughs> fucking glove. giant gun that like never <laughs> runs out of bullets. So, but uh, you know they're losing the fight. They're just not going to make it. But just then, the warriors of peace show up again for the second time, and they do this, and then and now they can win the fight, and and everybody is happy or something. I don't know. The, the guy literally elbows a demon in the skull in this yeah. scene. And then the fucking the atheist guy runs up to one demon who's already on the ground, shoots him in the face with this tiny ass little fucking gun, and then spins it on his finger and blows a smokeless barrel. <laughs> They're just having fun with it. You blow uh, the yep. smoke off your laser gun, man? Your <laughs> demon laser? So, and here's the other spot I was talking about where they the lack of a multicam setup was uh, mm-hmm. was really hurting Getting them in trouble. They all decide to spread out. There's like eight guys now, right? They all decide to spread out on a stairway, all facing the same direction, <laughs> so they can have a conversation. <laughs> so together. they can break into choreograph. <laughs> <dancing>. <laughs> I was waiting this whole time for them to sing. Right? Yes. They never sing. They never, the whole fucking movie. Music. Yeah. Just the words. Jesus Christ. Superstar. So many great options right here. <laughs> so, but Paul is telling him the mission is hopeless and we'll never win. And, and, and Leia's like, no, it's not hopeless. And that's her entire contribution to the scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Is this the part? And maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. You guys tell me, did Paul split off yet? Yes, this is where he does that, right? This, this is, is where, where he first like, splits off. Yeah, he's like, I'm okay. going it alone. And we're yeah. like, is that so that you can show up later when they're in a fight and nobody thinks he's like, whoosh. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, but but the demons have, have like told, I guess, you know, before they got killed, they told Denise Richards where they were going or they gave her a fucking clue and she figured it out. Yeah, they go, words, see you later. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> she was like, I know what you mean. Sorry, words. <laughs> Didn't want the uh, demons to be able to tell we were talking about words. Yeah. Words. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to cut to a place, a cave called God's Fortress. That's where the demons are hiding now that the library has been exposed, I guess. So they, they drive out there. Now they have to walk up the mountain, right? Because the demons would sense the vibrations of the SUV. Really? Oh, did they explain that? Yes, that's what the bicep tells that. Yes. Yes. Get a fucking Prius for your yeah. Warriors of Peace mission. What <laughs> Three of you. So, so they're literally walking this like multi-mile mountain pass yes. like at elevation in the snow. Nobody has water. Nope. They're just in their demon fighting clothes. Yep. <laughs> they don't need to hydrate. They, they, they have their weapons. They have their bow and arrow and whatnot. They walk by some ancient heads that the Tbilisi Tourism Bureau insisted that they walk by. Yeah, they're Those weird, cool. but they're cool. Yeah. 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 And, and I get. A, I went up and I fully like prepared a snack and sat back down during the scene <laughs> because I missed nothing. <laughs> no. They just walked. They just walk and then they're like, well, I guess there was... Nothing there. There was like that night we get the tech. He's checking with his fucking demon view master. And he's like, oh, I'm getting demon readings to the left and to the right. And they're like, well, we should split up eight characters is way too many for the audience to keep track. Oh, is that what that (laughs) was? Because to me, it looked like he was using night vision during the day just to see worse. (laughs) Yeah. Like he was like, wow, it is hard to see. I can probably just move these away from my eyes. Then well, I the could just see with my eyes. Saw, no, the last time we saw that device, it was night vision. Yes, that, <laughs> it, absolutely. That's what it did the last time it was in the fucking movie. But now it's a demon viewfinder or some shit. 
<laughs> Ooh, and they're in these cool cliff dwellings. I definitely Googled all of those. Me too. All these cool yeah. cave towns all over yeah. Georgia. Oh, those are yeah. so fucking cool. But they're like, oh no, sorry. I guess Paul hasn't split off. This movie is so hard to keep track of. Paul hasn't split off because he's uh, with them at this point, right? He fights the. Oh, you're right. Because they've got the the A team and B team each get attacked by a different monster. Yeah, yeah. they should have had him split up to make the movie make any fucking sense. <laughs> right nope. until now. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So, but one side gets attacked by an Ankylosaurus. I'm team Ankylosaurus all the fucking way. They, <laughs> I'm so mad that they killed the Ankylosaurus. And the other one's a more traditional demon looking demon. I call them all budget pants labyrinth monsters. Yeah, really. They felt yeah. very, yeah, that was an inspiration here. The priest gets demon bit though, right? Yeah. And apparently the priest is mortal, even though earlier, didn't he say he was like an angel or something? I don't know. I did. I, I, I missed they it. Were, I, they had superpowers. Something you would think, but yeah. no, he's he's demon bit. He's gonna need well, what he's gonna need is the best damn medic in the business, right? <laughs> right? So now they carry the priest back to a church. Now she has her blue ooze with her, right? She might, you know, she's like, No, I'm gonna save this file for my kid. You, um, yeah, make it or you very don't, clear that, right? Yeah. He wants to be a martyr, he's you know, that's like their fucking yeah, no, weird priest fever dream, dream. right? Yeah. yeah. So they go to this almost this enormous empty room, which is you know clearly a fucking soundstage that they've just put the one little table in with a little bit of medical stuff there, and they she's going to doctor him, right? And he goes, "Oh, I think it's time for me to meet the good Lord." And she goes, "No, it's just a flesh wound." She actually uses the words, yeah, "It's wound. just a flesh wound." <laughs> yeah. But he's like, oh, well, I guess I'll be fine in the next scene then. She's like, you you sure fucking will. These demons don't bite very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Their teeth are blunt. They're quite They're blunt. like kittens. They bite. They, it hurts, but it's not, it doesn't do any real damage. So, th and I think this is where Paul. It is. Yeah. Paul has a off. crisis of faith moment. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's I like, this is religious stuff makes before I bought into it. But now I don't know, man. And it's like, really? Now that you've seen all the demons, you've seen demons. <laughs> and so now you don't believe in them. Yeah. I just need a gun in my brain. Yeah. I'm on my own. Yeah. And then he leaves in a snit. What does that mean? though? Like he's going to hunt demons smartly by himself or he's an atheist now and go away. What did the movie think it meant? I don't fucking know. And it doesn't fucking matter either. Right. No. In fact, it makes opposite than sense. Right. When we, when we <laughs> when it eventually tries to do a reveal to make sense of this, it actually, they go the other way with it. But before we get that, we have to go back to Gabe. He's going to Karen Denise Richards. He wants to speak to her manager about the flaming sword he's got. And you know from the from the minute the scene starts, of course the sword needs faith to work. Right, yes. It's just like the lightsaber. It needs the force. I keep telling people Star Wars is just a stupid religious space off. No <laughs> oh, no. oh no I'm listen. forwarding all the emails. 100% agree, same. Kara. Oh, okay. Well, you can email me. Story. Yes. <laughs> I'll definitely respond. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, fill up his inbox. That's a threat. Same story. So, yeah, but but only Christians can make the sword flame up because she pulls it out and she's like, what, this flaming sword? And boom, it's flaming. And he's it's like, It's the best. It, the sword works right away when she pulls it. Like, like he couldn't open a jar and she's like, ha, idiot. There you go. <laughs> and why is it in all of these stupid fucking movies, the one who ostensibly has no faith is the only one in the movie who's had faith the whole time. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. he's the only guy who's like, sure, I'll fucking unwaveringly follow these weird mandates from a ghost. Right. And then and he's like, I don't know. Demons for, but I'm not sure if I believe in God, though. Yeah. That's so stupid. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal of faith to recruit a team right. and right. fly them to Georgia on a hunch yeah. about a wine clue from a ghost in your kitchen. Yeah. There's a lot of faith. A lot of faith. But he needs like 10 more pep talks before he gets his faith back. Yeah, well, you're right. We need to be a little deeper in Act 3. Yeah. Yeah. Any chance you know anybody named like, I don't know, Father Father or something? Yeah, like right. Somebody <laughs> who would know about faith that could help you? Go talk to Father Father or any priest, really. So then we cut to fucking Biceps doing his come hither knife kata. <laughs> right? The, uh, the big guy who's the warrior of peace. He's dancing with a knife when Trigger comes up and says, hey, are we buddies now? And he's like, yeah, we're buddies now. What is this scene? Oh, this is this actor doing sword kata and then another actor walking up and him being like, oh, are, are we filming this? We're in the scene? Cool. <laughs> nice. Let's talk about it. 
and then it evolves into like, also, I take care of orphans. Yes, <laughs> right. He's yeah. like, can you, what is this? Completely <laughs> off the rails. He goes, <laughs> he goes, can you, Trigger says, hey, can you teach me that awesome knife kata? And he's like, oh, well, as soon as I'm done volunteering at the orphanage. And we're like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. He's like, why, why do you volunteer at the orphanage? I was an orphan. I was an orphan too. Can we be best friends? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like, so stupid. This is what a man thinks is like a heartwarming, vulnerable <laughs> moment. Like, this is the writer being like, hmm. I'm going to humanize I'm going to get in touch with my feminine side here. <laughs> like, yeah. What? And they take a time out from saving the fate of humanity <laughs> to do a little volunteer work. A little volunteer work at the orphanage. They literally go to the orphanage. Yeah. So we cut to them. They're leaving the orphanage together. They're like walking away going, we sure did have fun volunteering at the orphanage today, didn't we? And just then sweaty guy comes up and sweats at them. So and he, he runs away. They give chase. Mm -hmm. Why? All he did was sweat at you. Okay. Because he's evil. It, I, I loved how this happened. It plays out. So the demons were apparently staking out the orphanage because it's like, you know, the staying at the den of iniquity, it's like the opposite. So they were right. staying yeah. at the oh, orphanage. That's where the good guys, good guys hang out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And they go for, the, it's the demons have motorcycles they go for the run them over with motorcycles move. Right. Which I don't think that's a thing. I don't think. I, don't, I feel like motorcycles would make the fight harder for you if you had to stay on a motorcycle the whole time. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Especially if you're doing a lot of wheelies for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that right. That seems like it would make it harder. <laughs> a lot of thematic wheelies. So they do one motorcycle charge. It does nothing because that's nothing. And then the demons are all of a sudden the ones running away on <laughs> Cycle. Oh, just yeah, like weird power dynamic shifted guys right call it, we 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 said we're switching right and now the good guys are chasing <laughs> bad guys they they got the ball i guess it's i weird. Get, right right yeah <laughs> it's like, oh, right, they uh, ate a fucking power pellet <laughs> yeah and so so now they're chasing now the bad guys are a demons and b on motorcycles so you'd think chasing them on foot is really like a doomed venture altogether but no they catch up with the demons. <laughs> Actually, get I'm sorry. He gets ahead of them. Biceps gets ahead of him and does a roundhouse kick and kicks the demon off the motorcycle in the fucking face as he drives by. <laughs> wet dream, this whole movie. Yeah, right. White nationalist, cis male, yep. wet dream. <laughs> Non-Euclidean space. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. And so, but he grabs the demon and he's like, ah, now that I've beat you up, I can interrogate you. And the demon's like, ha, die on purpose. And he dies on purpose. <laughs> so he gets nothing. So that was nothing. So then we, <laughs> we cut to Gabe. <laughs> the best transition. So, so that was that nothing. Was nothing. <laughs> nothing happened That's there. That's in the script so many times. <laughs> So then we, we cut to Gabe. He's looking in the mirror. He's trying to do the, are, are, are you talking to me scene? But he's got his little, his little sword lit and he's trying to coax some fire out of it. <sighs> it's so good. Yeah. He's practicing in the mirror to see if he looks cool when he pulls out I don't the know sword. why, because you would be able to tell whether or not there was a mirror if your sword was on fire. <laughs> yeah, you could just <laughs> look. See, yeah, yeah, he's got to see his face. And then, of course, the, the priest walks in and he's like, you know, the definition of crazy. I'm like, oh, it's not the fucking definition of crazy. There's never but, okay. been anyone's definition. Never, yes. Of insanity. And then he's literally like, Father, how do I face? <laughs> yeah. Like that's this scene, right? <laughs> that's what we, and then he's like, Gabriel, until you trust that your penis can overcome evil, you will never be a real life man God. <laughs> well, like that is he, the scene. He has this <laughs> incredibly stupid line. He goes, the priest goes, you know, you may have the resolve to run towards the ledge, but do you believe someone will catch you when you jump? And I wrote in my fucking notes, man, that is the clumsiest goddamn foreshadowing in history that he's going to have to run to a ledge and jump, but he's not going to. It's amazing. <laughs> it's meaningless. Sometimes it's figurative. I and guess. Sometimes yeah. it's literal, but we're not going to tell you. And which. sometimes, so that was nothing. Yes, so that was Moving nothing. On. Well, yeah, and then Tech, the, the atheist guy, he runs in and he's like, I have some readings or something on my readings. I know where the next scene is now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like that this team of godly peace warriors needs an atheist to like do real things every so <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, because that awesome. was actual technology. It wasn't like magic technology. Uh, right, yeah. Because they have a, see, a, see, a suker, a, see, a seether? Scryer. A scryer. A scryer. Okay. Seems like they would use the scryer more. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is amazing that we went up to the trouble of setting up a scryer and we still have this guy rock, walking a guy. I got some readings or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, the scryer's got too much on her plate. She's like, <laughs> yeah. I got to do archery. I've got to also like use the elixir. I'm, and I'm the medical the guy. Future. Yeah, yeah right. it's too much. No, I would totally scry us like the answer to all our problems. But like, I don't want to take Farouk. To, Farouk, what do you have that's that's probably real? So what, 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 what did you get on your, on your <laughs> it's thing? It's also a night vision goggles when the plot calls from that. I don't want to step in any toes, but I could scry the shit out of this if I needed to. So... <laughs> So yeah, so now they're walking through one of the many lovely forests in Georgia when they're suddenly surrounded by demon wolves. And we're like, oh, another action sequence? And they're like, no, we, uh, no. The demon wolves just disappear. And we're like, I mean, good, I guess, now. Yeah. But the demons disappear. And then Paul shows up. Remember when Paul walked away like a scene and a half ago? Well, he's done now. He's come back. Yeah, how much you want to bet Paul's been turned? Because that's yeah. not obvious <laughs> plot point. <laughs> well, the atheist even says, I bet he's been turned. <laughs> and everybody's like, no, he probably hasn't been, though. <laughs> yeah, Paul goes, I haven't been turned. He goes, you have to believe me, says the worst actor who yeah, is right. incapable of making anyone believe any of his lines ever. I don't believe you as a meta situation. Right, like, yes. Like the characters are, I don't believe, nobody believes you, Paul. Nope. So then we cut to some cool ruins. I, or not, they're not ruins. This is the Chronicles of Georgia, where I guess they've like written the history of the of the nation on all these like pillars and on the floor there. It's very That's cool. It's cool. another, so another tourist trap that I spent a lot of time Googling rather yep. than watching the movie. But yeah, everybody stands around waiting for another action sequence to happen. And yes, it turns out Paul did turn into a bad guy. Duh. Yeah, right. <laughs> so was, fucking dumb. He was Michael or Michael was in Paul's body the whole time or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? that's the other thing. He wasn't actually turned. They they actually tell us here they take us back to Iraq and they're like, look, you remember how he murdered all those innocent civilians? He's always been a bad guy and we've always been able to use him. And we're like, wait, that is so inconsistent. <laughs> Why did he... Ugh. Right. Why would you have him walk away then if he's always been on your side? Right. Because we even flash back to the scene earlier in the movie where they're at yeah. the target practice thing and Michael appeared to him at target practice, too, and apparently killed him and took his body over there. Yeah. So there's like all the I, I yeah, I like had my abacus out at this point. I was like, wait, this doesn't add. Oh, makes right. no fucking makes, sense. Yeah. No sense. Paul was killing demons with them in several <laughs> yes. scenes before this after he got turned yes and then and then he left in a snit was that like an attempt by the demon at lowering morale in the warriors <laughs> yeah, i guess yeah because he kept talking about how they're not gonna fight or they're not gonna whatever so it's a double 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 cross <laughs> this is stupid Harum. who's with me that it's stupid right right, right. Harum. hate doing this so okay so now it's time to fight lumpy the demon Right. And <laughs> so and every I love this. Everybody's fighting a demon except for Father Father, who is fighting death. Sweaty guy. Oh, well, <laughs> against his so, demise. <laughs> yeah, well, no, he does get stabbed in the heart. And I don't <laughs> it's not just a flesh stab this time. He's really going to die. And he wants to. He wants it. Oh, yeah. He's he knows it'll be like a fucking statue or something. Get shit. the fuck out of this movie as quickly yeah. as he can. Yeah. <laughs> I like how Gabriel confronts now it's Michael. Paul morphs into Michael to reveal it. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to fight. So the fight's about to start and Gabriel confronts him and is like, hey, fuck you about <laughs> yeah. the flashback we both just watched in our movie, by the way. <laughs> now we're going to fight. Yes. Yep. So yeah, but father, father gets killed. And just as he's dying, he turns to Gabe and he's like, I want you to have my stupid cross thing or whatever. And so that sends Gabe into a a flash sideways. <laughs> yeah. Right. So he's going to have a vision. Cuba Gooding Jr. shows back up, but he's going to have a vision where he's seeing what Tbilisi will look like if the demons win the fight. Ooh, I like this scene. I like, I'm not going to lie. I would probably pay good money to like go onto a smoldering ash set like that. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. Right. 
fucking badass. Especially if Cuba Gooding Jr. is going to like dress in a cool robe and like tell you a speech about and stuff. Get, like too many necklaces. Yeah. 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 Lots of necklaces. You notice too, like this happens a lot in this movie where there's a doodly do and it's almost like, it must be like the Zach Morris like, Time out. Because like, <laughs> yeah, they're safe. Like he's in the middle of an action sequence. There's a fight going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, they're going to restart the fight. And all the demons were like, we gave him, we gave him a free timeout for that. They so he was yeah. obviously, he was doing, uh, he's uh, like, this space talking about Balthazar. Was getting you get a timeout for talking to Balthazar. That's <laughs> on base. Yeah. So, and, but he's, he goes like, I don't think I can do it, Cuba Gooding Jr. And, and, and Cuba goes, well, you, the omnipotent guy never said it would be easy. And he's like, well, but did you hear it? Because it should be, though, if we have on our side an omnipotent guy. <laughs> he goes, why was I chosen? And he goes, well, for that, we'll have to finish out that flashback from the very beginning of the movie and tell everybody what you saw right before you got shot. Which we all knew it was going to be a kid. It was a kid. It was just, oh, there's a little girl. And he chose not to murder a child. And because of that, he is somehow a good guy. Like, he is a moderately decent human being. Even in the middle of a war, oh, he wow. still wouldn't shoot an innocent nine-year-old. That yeah. is what they're going for. That's, That's what they're ridiculous. going for, that he is not a psychopath and therefore a good guy. Yeah. But he's like, you know, everybody has faith in you. Why don't you have faith in yourself, Gabe? And then they flash out. He, like, he opens his eyes and they're back in the demon fight. Right? Yep. Okay, I finished my doodly do with Balthazar. Let's we now we fight. Now we fight. Cool. Now, yeah, exactly. Time in, and I want to point out two things about Leia at this point because she's like she's like picking off demons like Katniss Everdeen now with her bow and arrow. First of all, she had three arrows. We saw over and over again. We got a close up of her quiver. There were three fucking arrows in it, and also like why? Like I'm not saying she can't be good with a bow and arrow, but why would she be? You know, she was in the army. They don't give you archery training in the army. So she has to be good with a bow and arrow and she has to be a, an apothecary and mm -hmm. <laughs> she has to be still mothering her her child with an unknown disease. And what else did she have? She was a scryer. She's the scryer. And she has to she, see the future she does the because scrying. she's a woman. Right, yeah. Right. Everybody else gets to be mediocre, but if she wants to be on a level playing field with them. All right, all right. Yeah, she's got to have way more talent. And, well, it, it is funny because it's like, it's the patriarchy just sneaking into this jackass's writing that like, he's like, well, what would be the point of having the woman? Right. Like, and, and yeah. he keeps oh, yeah. having it's not to answer. Sneaking yeah. in. It's fucking. Well, no, right. No, exactly. It's, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Certainly wasn't sneaking around in the Delilah scene. So, <laughs> no, yeah. it was not. She goes to 77% of heaven, but like some of it's walled off. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Penis is only this way. The highest glass ceiling. heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. So and then Michael like offers Gabe a position in his army. There's a, there's actually a point where he goes and I quote, "You think you could beat me? I could beat you with one hand tied behind my back." That's the actual line. So like if when you as a writer avoid a cliche, it goes right to this guy. You dodge it and it hits this writer apparently. <laughs> oh, I wanted Gabriel to be like, "Cool, uh, tie it." Yeah. And we have to, we have to watch fucking Michael the Archangel be like, "Oh, okay." Okay. Oh, does anybody have rope? Yes. Demons? Real quick. <laughs> but yeah, but he almost closes his eyes because he's getting beat in the fight. But just then, he Jesus flashbacks to back when he had faith in God. Ugh. And he believes in God now again. So he grabs his letter opener and he calls upon the flame with the might of his faith. And he gets wings. He totally does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For no reason. For like three seconds of budget for wings, and then they're just gone. Again. They open up all big, and then they just go right back. And then and they just go away. away again. And they could not more, look more like he was standing in front of them. It's just, <laughs> it's so bad and pointless and hilarious. I laughed for so fucking Me long. Too. God, it. I literally laughed until it hurt, and I was like, "Oh my god, my heart!" Though, <laughs> does he fly? No, no. He, just, no, he doesn't shows do any cool wings flying. like a peacock, and then is like, "Okay, that was enough." <laughs> I just wanted to show you that. Yeah. I look bigger when I have the wings. It's like scared <laughs> off a bear, yeah. or something. Yeah, right. And then he kicks the angel in the nuts, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean, it's like angels don't have. Testicle, they don't have genitals. I'm saying, like, that's some angel lore, but one way or the other, kicking the bad guy in the nuts right after you grow wings seems a little incongruous to me. Oh, it's completely congruous. It's a good misdirect, I guess. This is, yeah. They're looking at the yeah. wings, dick punch. 
Yep. <laughs> Classic <laughs> but, move. But he so stabs bad. the angel with his fire sword and Sweaty comes up and, and Michael's like, help me, Sweaty, help me. But Sweaty won't help him because he's a demon and he's a bad guy. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? He like turns on him and then he's like, I'm all sad. I'm, I'm, I'm defeated. And then Satan shows up. Oh my God. I know okay. like, I'm very disappointed yes! in you, Michael. <laughs> Satan, <laughs> Satan zoops in for a quick HR meeting. Oh my God. <laughs> has a stern talking to for Archangel Michael. I was still trying to recover from the wings, y'all. When, <laughs> yeah. like, cause, cause Satan, like, like they're just talking. They're like, oh, I have defeated you. He's like, I'll never be defeated. And then from off camera, Satan goes, well, actually, you look like you got pretty fucking defeated to me. Where did, you, we just, we where did you hire over. that army from? You should try <laughs> Zip Recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> ZipRecruiter.com slash Satan. And then Cuba Gooding Jr. shows up. He's like, am I late to the party? That's literally his line. Am I late to the party? And it's like, well, actually, yeah, we're done fighting now. You could have, you were a warrior. You told us earlier in the movie, you could have been a use earlier, but no, him and Satan have a little shit talk. You know, he's like, Satan, Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Newman. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. And then Michael is bees. Yep, yep. Then Michael turns into bees. <laughs> Michael is bees. I just had this moment, and I know you guys have these moments all the time. This is what you do for a living, but like Balthazar, Lucifer, like this is so stupid. Like how do people... <laughs> In the year 2024, <laughs> believe in like Zeus. Yes. <laughs> you know, and the Titans. Right. And like, like this is the same thing. It it's is so though. Amazing. And they're, th this movie takes it and goes, look how stupid it is. And people are like, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> right. Well, that's the amazing Zeus thing. Zeus and the Titans are way more logically coherent than this. <laughs> I know, that's true. And they are, right? Because you don't have to get a, uh, a past the omni omnibenevolence. Exactly. Omnibenevolence. Polyism yeah. makes a little yeah. bit more sense. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but then, so they're, they've won the day. Leia starts seeing the triggers wounds because, yeah, she's, her fucking work is never done. Right. <laughs> And then they're like, you know, Trigger's like, I think I'm going to stay with the Warriors of Peace, guys. And everybody's like, yeah, we don't care. Nobody <laughs> fucking cares. To do what we just won because of God. We always win. What are you talking yep. about? What are you going to do here? And at this point, I was so mad. I was like, okay, we're done. Like, they're, they just won. Like, what happened to Randy Couture? What happened to... Picasso's butcher, the serial right, killer. None of these, all of this shit. <laughs> They're all bees. They're all okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a really, really evil swarm of bees hanging out with each other. <laughs> Guys, that went really badly. I guess we just do stay, stay like this for a while. I don't know. Hopefully they do a sequel. Oh, God. Very deep cut. I really want to cut in the, is that my daughter in there clip from... Uh, what you would call it? So, sorry. So some like some of our very very dedicated <laughs> listeners will get that. <laughs> no job. idea. What That's you're it. Yeah, no, no, River. You, you I have a question yeah. here. Like, so so Balthazar comes back, right? Cuba as a fucking force ghost. Yes. Yeah. Why is he see through? Because they're ripping off everything from Star Wars they can. They're trying to make the point that you made that this is just like Star Wars. If you think about it, Jesus actually did it better <laughs> first, right? But it's no. But okay. <laughs> But it makes no sense in the movie. Nope, sure the fuck doesn't because he, he can appear be to people not see through the whole movie. Just normal. He's, we we we've seen him do it. And the thing is that the like trick that they use to make him see through is like makes is war. It looks bad. It does. Like yeah. it's worse. It looks like Star Wars in the seventies. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. So and then we get the movie's big finish, guys. There oh, was a I twist. Hate, oh my god! It is the dumbest goddamn thing. It makes no sense. So Gabe turns to to Cuba Gooding Jr. and he goes, "Hold on a second. I've been dead this whole time, haven't I? Ever since I got shot in that opening flashback." <laughs> and he's like, "Just like the Sixth Sense." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, can we, I mean, I know it's like we could just end it there, but can we sit with this for a minute? Right, can we talk it makes about no what this goddamn means? sense. Right, because he had a job. Like, was he, like, was <laughs> the dead guy, was, the, was he working on another dead guy's car? The little girl, they go after this. They go to the scene with the little girl with the tea party and we're like, was she a dead little girl with a tea party? But she's not. 
He recruits all of his army How? friends. He's a get, dead guy. They know he's dead if he got shot in the battle they were with him in. Yeah, I guess maybe that's why they agree because they because no. they get they're like they're they like all, oh he's right because they're surprised to find he out. He showed up and it was like, hey, we need to do this cool shit, and they're like, cool. Thought you were dead. Not freaked out at all. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, no, what? none of this makes fucking sense. And just in case you were like in danger of thinking maybe it did add up and you were just remembering wrong, they go back to Tea Party Girl, right? The, the Tea Party Girl at the beginning. Oh my gosh, the, the ending is so atrocious. I have nothing to say about this scene. I have no notes. It is unnotable. <laughs> this scene is horrible. This movie is so bad. So the the little girl, the, so Leia shows up with her daughter who's now cured and has a full head of hair, right? Like so. When well, it, that's how we know she's cured. Right. So like apparently their <laughs> hair grew really fucking fast after they cured it. She might as well shake it out from <laughs> under the bald cap at this <laughs> exact right. moment yes, like a shampoo exactly. commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but she comes over to the tea party girl and she's like, hey, you know, your neighbor Gabe, who has been dead this whole time and is a ghost, gave us something to give to you. And we're and, and she's like, no, he didn't. We saw him in the movie. We saw how it went and he never gave you anything. She's like, Zzz. and it's a tea set. And, and now the tea party girl and the sick daughter can have a tea party together. Yeah, it's it's her tea set broke earlier in the movie and he mm -hmm. replaces it with an equally 